What's up guys Maelstrom here if you enjoyed then like and subscribe so I can keep on making these awesome videos for you guys. Hello? He asked out loud. Only to hear the echoing effect of his vocals reverberate off the owls. How was that possible? All he could see was grass and field and the night sky. Did that mean he was in a room? If that was the case, then someone had to be watching him which also meant he was either captured or placed here on purpose. He thought all of that in less than 30 seconds. His analytic mind again showing why he was considered a legend. Minato Namakes, a voice suddenly called out. It was not the voice that scared him. He was a shinobi, trained to detect minuscule movements and move at a moment's notice. It was the fact that the man was directly above him floating in the air was what scared him. The man was old, which was apparent from his long white beard and huge cane, small beady red eyes and long eyebrows. Scars were prevalent on his head, with a pair of long perpendicular scars above his right eye, making it obvious this man had seen some battles. His outfit looked rather familiar to Minato, especially the black Hakama. And Shitagi, who are you? Minato asked the elderly man. The man stared at the blonde-haired shinobi in front of him before replying. Some call me General Shigakuni Yamamoto. Some call me old man to which Minato sweat dropped. But you have called me. I have responded. As such, you are now here. It took Minato a few seconds to comprehend just what the man had said. His eyes widened. The Kiwabi. Through the usage of seals, Minato Namakaze called up the Shinigami to seal the demon into his newborn son condemning him to be the Jinchu Riki without his say in it, saving his village of Kanaha and giving up his life as fourth luggage. Why was he here? I have to return. The Kiwabi has been taken care of, interrupted the Shinigami calmly. What? Minato asked in shock. You have no idea how essential your boy is to that world. But I do. As such, I have granted specific powers to him and him alone. He will need as much as he can get for the trials ahead, Yamamoto stated. I, Minato was speechless. However, the Shinigami was not finished speaking. More importantly, I cannot in good conscience take your soul, especially with the knowledge of your achievements and power as a human. With that being said, Yamamoto did something others would never believe. He smiled. What do you know of the Shinigami? Sometime later Hukage Tower Conference Room 3 AM. The council was in an uproar. Emotions were blatantly apparent on the faces of the people who organized and maintained the village of Kana as the commotion was heard all throughout the tower. Nobody was quiet and for good reason. How could you be quiet at a time like this? Despite all of the chaos within the room, there were people who were patiently waiting out the chaos currently occurring and waiting for the leader to enter. The recent events have definitely caused a lot of silence and shouting. The nine-tailed demon, Kiwabi, being released from Kashina, the death of the fourth Hukage, and the sudden disappearance of the Yandame's body and the Kiwabi. Finally, the newborn child found in the arms of a still-breathing mother, Kashina Uzumaki seemingly in a coma, in the middle of a forest outside of Kanaha's walls. The door opened, and like a mysteriously powerful jutsu being set, the room was silent. Hiruzen Sarutobi, newly reinstated Sandame Hukage, entered into the room. Swiftly applying a silencing seal, Hiruzen made his way towards the seat of the Hukage. Sitting down, Hiruzen breathed in softly before releasing his breath. After a pregnant silence he gave birth to words. A lot has happened in the past few hours. Hiruzen closed his eyes and was silent again. The members in the room unable to say a word. Each person would not forget the weary and tired look of the elderly god of Shinobi, as he took a moment of silence to gather his thoughts. Now I am Hukage again at this his eyes snapped open. An emphatically powerful feeling of confidence, power and control took over the room and the occupants, civilians and shinobi alike knew that without a doubt the god of shinobi was back. To make things clear, Minato and Kashina had planned a seal called the Shiki Fujin which is an SS-ranked sealing jutsu is created by the Uzumaki clan. I cannot go into the full usages of this technique out of respect for the Uzumaki clan, but to make a long story short, the Kiwabi was to be sealed into their son, Naruto, to save the village from further destruction and making the boy the next Jinchu Riki. The civilians, not aware of the techniques that Ninja did most of the time, were about to yell for the murder of the child toward the demon. But the eyes of Hiruzen silenced them abruptly. This did not happen. The the confused faces of the council, shinobi and civilian prompted Hiruzen to continue. Minato-san has sealed half of the chakra of the Kiwabi into an Uzumaki sword with unknown properties. The sword is currently sealed up in a location I will not reveal to you. Minato split the other half of the Kiwabi's power within Naruto. The goal is that when Naruto
Naruto gains control of the power within him, he will be able to access the second half of his chakra. Hiruzen stated calmly that sentence alone put shock upon the faces of many. Half of the power of the Kyuubi was now in a sword that only one can wield. Thoughts of gaining the boy's power by choosing to adopt the boy began rising like well-watered plants in the minds of the power hungry within the room while humble wishes of helping the boy attain full mastery of a sword were the thoughts of the selfless ninja of Kane. Undeterred, Hiruzen continued. No one must know of this. As such, we will tell the entire village that the Hukage did defeat the Kiwabi. This is a SS class secret and if word gets out oh the word will not get out. Because if one person who was not in this room finds out, or someone I gave no permission to gain such information comes across this. I will not kill that person. I will murder every inhabitant in this room. Do not test my patience, snapped Hiruzen as more intent permeated the room and again put the shinobi and civilian alike at a loss of breath. Sarutobi continued as if talking about the weather. As for Kishina Uzumaki, she is in a coma with no news as to when she will awake. As such, Naruto will be under the care of Hate Kakashi. I want the strongest member of each clan providing protection for the two, as I am sure Kakashi can take care of himself, I have learned to always be extra careful. Let me make one thing clear if something happens to Naruto. Hiruzen glared. An impressive magnitude of killer intent began permeating the room, making the occupants shake and sweat to build around the heads of the clans and civilians. There was no mistake in that Hiruzen was not playing with this statement. Something will happen to you. For now. Let me hear the damage report and the funding it will take to repair my village. Nara, tell me. Hours later, Hiruzen finally dismissed the council as he had a lot of things to think about, such as the dream he had dreamt this morning. What a vivid account of how the future would have looked like if things went on without any interference. Destruction as a result of mistrust, anger and fear. These feelings can motivate the human mind to act so harshly upon one another. Such acts were saddening to Hiruzen as he watched the crumbling of the entire shinobi world. Dream or not, Hiruzen was determined to bring change to Kane. No more would he let a fair slide like this. Pulling out a scroll, Hiruzen began writing down things that needed to be done tonight, and what had to be done in the upcoming future. Snapping his fingers two times, Two squads of A and B was at his desk ready for orders. Unit A. You are to track down Senjutsunade and give her this letter. If she does not obey, you are to use force. I have written down another set of instructions on how to get her here if she uses force. Read and enact only if she begins to rebel. You are dismissed. Unit A dispersed to carry out their orders as accurately as possible. Unit B. Same for Jiraiya. You are dismissed. As the team disappeared, Hiruzen buzzed his receptionist. As she opened the door, Hiruzen stood up slowly and tossed her a scroll. Give this to my scientist. It is time he comes back. The receptionist shakily caught the scroll and left in a daze. If H.E. was coming back, the situation must really be serious. Hiruzen sighed in exhaustion. It was time to sleep in the morning things will continue to be changed. But Kanaha was not built in a day. As such, the changes could not be done in one day either. Next morning Chunin exam stadium. Hiruzen Sarutobi stood in the middle of the field with his hands behind his back. He had conducted a meeting with the people in this arena. They were the teachers at the academy. These were extremely vital people to the development of his ninja and ninja to be. These people were heavily relied on to shape the future of Kanaha and as such, their jobs must be treated with the utmost importance. We are making changes to the curriculum of the academy. I have done some research into the lessons and class activity and in all honesty, it disappoints me to see how low we as a village have dropped in terms of standards. The academy is a place where we bring in children of civilian families and of ninja clan and develop them into loyal members of the village. They will grow to become soldiers and the bar has seemed to lower with our complacent view seeing as how war is no longer among us however. Sarutobi stopped the pacing he was doing and faced the ninja in the stadium. We are always at war, even when it seems we are not. Sarutobi finally sat down in the chair provided to him and crossed his fingers. So we are going to change it. If you have ideas, plan them. You have one month. We will meet again. When we meet there will be a discussion about what changes should be made. Seeing as how school will begin soon, there is no room for error. Am I understood? Asked the Hukage. H.A.I. Karus the chosen shinobi and Kanoichi alike. You are dismissed. Hiruzen said sharply as the group disassembled. After a while, 
Hyrazin went into his robe and retrieved two scrolls. With the snap of his finger, another ANB squad unit was at his desk. I am giving you this mission to deliver this message to Suna. After that you are to wait further instructions from the cage. With the completion of this delivery, you will then deliver this to the Fire Lord. It is time we address an issue that has been affecting the way my Kanaha has been run, said Hyrazin. After the group dismissed, Hyrazin got up creating a shadow clone to take care of his office and daily affairs. He made his way to the clan house. It was time the old bones of this cage got a second wind. Hatate clan residence. Kakashi was a simple man. He loved his Icha Icha and he loved his ANBU missions. He loved training with Rin and visiting the Memorial Stone. But what he did not love at the moment was this assignment. This assignment was anything but simple. The reason was simple, but not a good simple. The boy simply just would not stop crying. Is there a way to put a genjutsu on this kid to make it silent? Asked an exasperated Kakashi to Rin, who was currently smirking at Kakashi's predicament. Of course not. Why would you even think of doing such a thing? Give him to me, said Rin who, the minute she received the boy, whispered soothing sounds into the baby's ear, quieting him instantly. Kakashi looked at the woman with a blank stare before taking his hand and face palming slowly. Only a woman can ease a baby of its crying. How troublesome. What can I say Kakashi? You may be a genius in shinobi arts, but sometimes the simplest things can stump the smartest on earth. Isn't that right little little Narukun? said Rin playfully to the kid. It's going to be a long couple of years. Kakashi mumbled as he and Rin were assigned to watch the boy until Kashina awoke from her coma. Indeed it would be. Not just for Kakashi and Rin, but for Kaneya, and the entire shinobi world itself. One week later, Sarutobi sat down calmly watching the two in front of him. After years and years, the three of them have finally come to sit amongst one another, which was very detrimental to the development and well-being of Kanaha and its future endeavors. But it was this decision that would change the way things ran forever. Homura Mitakato and Koaru Yuta Tan. I suppose you are wondering why I have asked for you two to come to my office at this time and during such tumultuous times. The reason is simple. But before I tell you, I hope you know that as my good friends and fellow teammates, I do hope that you see my reasoning and allow me to explain further. But to cut to the chase, Hyrazin placed two papers on the desk and slid it towards them. The letters on the papers made the eyes of Homura rise and a gasp to exit Koaru's lips. I am relieving you both of your positions as my advisor and giving you the new assignment of being political overseers for the new lessons I am creating for my shinobi. The letter currently being read in the person's hand seemed to be slowly burning into a least that was what the ANB captain of unit felt like telling the Huck as he watched the paper currently being held in the hands of Tsunade. Tracking down the slug Sanon was an extremely tough task as she was constantly moving from place to place, day to day. She never stayed in the same spot for more than two days, leaving no trace of them ever being there. In fact, if it weren't for the fact that Sarutobi had a garment with her scent on it, and they happened to have Inizuka in the unit, finding Tsunade would have been an entire month instead of the three weeks it took. They were currently deep in fire country outside of a bar, where they finally caught Tsunade just as she was making her leave. Thankfully she was not heavily drunk, meaning she was not in a violent mood and did not rip the captain's head off his shoulders the minute she laid her amber eyes on the Kanaha emblem, though she was really tempted to do so in all honesty. But after reading that letter, she knew without a doubt she would need to come back immediately. Sensei has a lot of explaining to do when I see him, thought Tsunade viciously. After what seemed like five minutes, Tsunade crushed the paper in her hand excruciatingly slow before she threw the dusty remains of the paper into the air before glaring at the unit, the paper fading into the wind to be gone forever. The ANB squad tensed up at this movement. Preparation for this situation was one of the many options they had discussed. With Tsunade, it was common knowledge she did not want anything to do with Kanaya, but their preparation tactics were all for naught as Tsunade looked at her apprentice, Shizun and said nothing but six words. Shizun, we are going to Kanaya. Meanwhile, Unit B breathed a sigh of relief as after a nerve-wracking amount of time watching Jiraiya read the note, the Toad Sage instantly nodded in affirmation of whether he would be going to Kanaya with them. But they currently wished they had chosen the method in returning back to Kanaya. The reason you ask? The huge Toad they were currently struggling to stay on was slowly making even the hardest and toughest veterans of the Unit B squad. Ahra. Uh -huh. S-P-P-P-P-L-I-S-S-S-S-H-H-H-H. Nothing but the sound of the Toad jumping in the wind could be heard as the members of Squad B watched Wolf calmly wipe regurgitated waste off of his mask courtesy of the ANB 
member in front of him. Slug, that was downright disgusting. I am going to physically discombobulate you into an unrecognizable bloody pulp. I am seriously contemplating whether or not you did that on purpose. I am sure you knew that the wind would shift your vomit to land directly in my face. In conclusion, prepare yourself once we reach Kanya replied the currently vomit-covered ANBU squad member in a monotone voice that promised death and a lot of pain and suffering. Jiraiya would have chuckled at the situation if he did not have so much on his mind concerning Naruto, Kashina and the newfound knowledge on his old teammate. I think I'm going to throw up again. On second thought the toad was just getting slug of the unit rather sick and this was a rather funny situation. G R U U U U R B B H H S P L I I S S S S S S H H H H Slug Higher is in sight as he made his next change. By now, Jiraiya and hopefully, Sunade would be well on their way back to Kaneya. As such, he had to do what needed to be done with the council. It was time to make things known to them who exactly was boss and who was his way to the conference room. Hyrazen breathed in one time before exhaling sharply. It's time, he said to the anonymous person next to him. But of course Ensei, replied the person as they handed Hyrazen the papers in their hands before they faded into nothingness. Not one sign of ever being there. Hyrazen smirked. But it was not one of those grandfatherly smirks he usually held, no. It was a vicious smirk. A smirk not ever seen on his face. If anyone was to see this smile, they would instantly fear the coming storm of the professor. But as no one was there to see this smile, Hyrazen was left alone and unbothered, free to cause wreck and utterly mess stuff up the only way an experienced Hukage could. Blackmail. Just like a shinobi would. It seemed people forget that Sarutobi was a shinobi before a Hukage. A good one at that. The council has no idea what they are in for thought Hyrazen as he opened the door. The council at this moment was a bit confused. Where exactly were the Hukage's advisors? Usually they would be right behind him strolling in with a bit of elderly grace and confidence. It seemed Hyrazen was reading their minds at this moment as he spoke. I bet you are wondering where are my advisors, in which the answer to that is rather simple, said Hyrazen as he sat down and put his foot up on the table, bringing shock to money. They had been laid off said Hyrazen as if he was discussing the weather. You did what? yelled out a civilian council member as he rose out of his seat in apparent shock at the statement made by Hyrazen. I believe I am the old man who should be asking what, but seeing as how you are also approaching the elderly range of age, which results in loss of hearing, among other things, I will repeat. After that, I will be pulling out more tricks from my huckage hat now, Masahiro, I believe I said they had been laid off, the reason is rather simple. I have decided I have no need for advisors around the same age as me, especially when their services in their respective fields would be better used being taught to my ninja. As such, they will be the new educators for a special course that is mandatory for every shinobi and kanoichi the rank chunin and up. They will be educating my ninja in the world of politics. After all, who better than my ex-advisors? who knew the inner running and outer running of Kanaya and more. Now, if you ever scream at me again, civilian or not, you will find you will not have a box to channel your voice through, do not disrespect me. Know your place, barked Hyrazen, who throughout the entire dialogue, moved from his relaxed, feet up on table position, to directly in front of the civilian, channeling a bit of KI to make Masahiro pale in fear. Now, I want quiet as I do want Minato, Tobirama and I should have done years ago but have not had the chance to. Turning towards the window which showed a spectacular view of Hukage, Hyrazen smiled, unseen to anyone but the Hyuga clan head. Tell me Shikaku, what kind of a village is this predominantly? Asked Hyrazen. A ninja village, replied Nara lazily, his analytic mind creating possible options as to where Hyrazen would be going with this question. Precisely, now. Who fights the battle whenever we face war? Asked Hyrazen again. Ninja. Who teach the classes at the academy? Ninja. Who goes out on the mission and brings in an astounding 75% of the village's earning? Ninja. Great answers Nara. Now someone tell me. At this Hyrazen spun around and pointed to the left side, which currently has 7 civilian council members. Why do I have 7 council members putting their ideas, 
views and thoughts into how my village is run," said Hyrazen quickly. Who gave these people jurisdiction to take the earnings of my ninja and raise the village trade prices? Who gave these people permission to take 14% of the money used to fund my ANBU and place it in treasury? Who told Shizuka she can live in a huge mansion sitting directly across from the clan members when my ninja had been stuck in horrible lead infested houses, some struggling to pay rent? Fired off Hyrazen as his anger peaked to another level as he took the hat off of his head and placed it directly onto the lap of Masahiro. Why has he been sitting in my seat when I am not here? Do you want to be the Fire Lord of Kanaha Masahiro? If so let me know now, we can go out to the stadium and do battle for title of Fire Lord. I'll go easy on you too, shall I bring the bananas you said I should eat? How about I do to the banana what you said you would do when you thought I was not here? You don't look too well Masahiro. Are you okay? Hyrazen leaned down until he was nose to nose with Masahiro and smiled. Placing the folder he walked in with on the table and calmly opening it, showing pictures of Masahiro and Shizuka in some compromising positions, and began talking again. Do you need perhaps some more medicine from Shizuka that you got last night? I thought you were married but perhaps not. My apologies, said Hyrazen as he slowly stood up and took his hat away. The ninja of the shinobi council all shocked and extremely close to laughing at the hilarity of this moment, Tsum and Yuzuka even going as far as biting her arm to stop from howling in laughter and the Uchiha clan head, Fukagu Uchiha even coughing to cover up his laugh. This ends now. As of now, with the power granted by the daimyo of Kaneya, I Hyrazen and Sarutobi disassemble the citizen council. As of now. Hiroshima Shinji will be the spokesperson for the civilians, you have any issues you discuss it amongst yourself, and you bring it to him. Now, I want my money back in my shinobi's hand by midnight, or so help me Kami I will personally walk into each and every one of your houses and take my money by force. Do I make myself clear? Asked Hyrazen sharply. The civilians were too petrified to even speak as this moment, everyone but Hiroshima Shinji, who smiled in amusement and bowed to Hyrazen. Crystal clear Hukage sama replied Shinji. Hyrazen nodded in approval of his comment. You civilians may now take your leave, the continuing matters are for the ninja only. Shinji, I shall see you tomorrow to go over finances, continue to do the good and honest work you have been doing for years. You seven are dismissed, said Hyrazen simply as he sat back down. The minute the civilians left, which was rather speedy in all honesty, Tsum, Choza, and even the Baram she beheld, left or chuckled in laughter at the situation. I have been waiting for years to see you do such a thing Hukage sama replied Chaoza, a small smirk on his face. I too have been waiting for such a thing to occur. Why? But the mannerism in which you completed such an expulsion was unexpected yet sufficiently satisfying, said Shibi in his monotone voice, though if you really focused, you could hear the mirth in his voice. I am glad you all enjoyed the show. Now comes the serious part, said Hyrazen as he set his hands on the table and the atmosphere became extremely serious and businesslike. This was how the council should have been run. It would remain this way for years to come. First thing first, the academy regiment will be undergoing changes, in approximately three days we will have a new curriculum. This will be the new schedule for years to come. Secondly, I have requested the return of all Hunter Nin, Undercover Nin and more for the new classes I have previously spoke of. Finally, I have called for the return of the Sanin, said Hyrazen in conclusion. The range of facial expressions was quite amusing for Hyrazen to see, from surprise, to approval, to confusion, to surprise and then finally shock, even chose a dropping chips and Nara looking rather awake from the announcements. After a few seconds of silence, Hyrazen chuckled. In fact, one has been listening to the entire conversation from the start. Isn't that right? Asked Hyrazen. Why yes, yes, it is correct, said a voice from the shadows of the room. The person revealed themselves as they stood next to Hyrazen, bringing outrage to the council. You, screamed Tsum in a rage, ready to jump and attack the person. Suna, the Kazikage read the letter sent by the Hukage days ago and let out a sigh of relief. If there was any reason to be happy of the current alliance between Kanaha and Suna, now would be a great time to be thankful. The letter sent from Sarutobi stating they have received word of their current mission deficiency and have begun taking measures to stabilize the flow and fairness of who missions went to between the two villages. Patting the baby currently being held in the cage's arms, 
a tear escaped the eye of Karura Tsubaku, the Godame of Suna after the death of her husband, the fourth Kazikage who sacrificed his life to seal the one-tailed demon into her child. Another part of the letter spoke of how in a couple years, she should make a visit to Kanaha to get her child seal checked for any deficiencies as another sign of good faith, to which she herself agreed should be done. Things were finally looking up for Suna. Mist The Mizukage stared at the full squad of Mist Maximum Intelligent Squad of Termination with a face of apathy. Exterminate anyone of any sort of bloodline. No mercy, I want them all exterminated. Rid the world of such demons, go. In a second all 300 members were gone. Yagura. Mizukage of Kiri and three-tailed Jinchuriki turned around to stare at the dark hall. I have done your will my master. A good deed you have done my servant, go and rest my sweet, said a silky voice to Yagura as he nodded and left the premises. Soon, revenge will be mine, said a voice as chuckles faded into the night. Red eyes blinked once before becoming nothing. Kanaha Hospital in the room, which was heavily protected by the best AN view and trackers Kanaha had. Kashina Uzumaki slept, unaware of the current state of Kanaya or the things that were going to happen to her son, Naruto Uzumaki, or to her in the next few minutes. The door silently opened up, revealing a figure, whose hands glowed an eerie green light, signifying medical jutsu being applied. By the person's feet were the unconscious bodies of the ANBU and trackers. Time to check up on this patient, said the person, their glasses shining under the sheen of the midnight light. Kanaya conference room. Whoa, whoa. No need to be so hasty to kill me. I told you I was sorry about picking on you all those years ago, said Jiraiya, who stood behind Hirozen as Chaozo and Inochi tried to hold back the irate Tsum. I am going to enjoy neutering you when I get the chance, growled Tsum who forced took her arms out of the grasp of the people holding her and sat down with a huff. Hirozen sweat dropped before continuing. Now that we have Jiraiya here, we must wait for the other one, as no doubt, the other will arrive in. At that moment, the door smashed open and smoke filled the room as a figure was seen through the smoke standing there, and unconscious Nin in their hand. Softly tossing the Nin like paper, to which they rolled and slid across the conference room table to stop directly at Hirozen's hand, to which he simply patted the unconscious Nin on the head and whispered a jaw well done, even if the Nin could not hear him. After a while of silence, the person spoke. Sarutobi, Sunade, what a joy to see you again, said Hirozen with a smile at his student's eccentric entrance. Cut all the formalities. Are you serious about what you put on that letter? Sunade asked skeptically. Extremely said Hirozen. What is she referring to? If you don't mind me asking Hakage-sama, asked Fugaku Uchiha, his interest peaked as to what was occurring. Yes, Sensei, why don't you tell the group why H.E. is here in this room? Growled Jiraiya, his carefree expression vanishing, showing how fast he can become all business when the situation called for it. Hirozen sighed. So be it. I must ask that everyone hear me out at this moment and do not interrupt me. I have specifically sent out Shinobi to handle secret missions as they are the best at what they do. Currently, Nin that you have viewed as dead, traitors and more, are in fact, still loyal shinobi and kanoichi of Kaneya, such as Rin, Rukasho Aoi, and more shinobi to be named at a later date. One of those still loyal to us, despite the reports and information gathered on what he has been doing, is the final member to the Sanin. The only people who knew of this information are me, him and us. Heads turned to the area in which the voice was heard from to gasp in shock and surprise as strolled in the daimyo of fire country. Next to him being the man Hirozen had been discussing, Orokimaru, one of my deepest undercover shinobi for the past few years, said Hirozen with a cocky grin. Yep, I still got it. They should know better than to question me and why I do things. After all, in the jungle they should know who runs all the monkey business. One year later, how s? He doing this? Kakashi asked in shock watching the situation unfold in front of him. Well, think of his family and the answer should be pretty apparent, replied Ren as she held her hands out for the running one-year-old boy to come to her in laughter. Ren, 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 said Naruto in laughter, attempting to say Ren's name. A-W-W, he's so cute. I can tell you're going to be a stunner when you get older, said Rin as she held the laughing one-year-old boy. Kakashi shook his head in amusement. Already running and jumping, Naruto was truly the child of Minato as he began standing up at seven months and walking at nine. Like it or not, Naruto had the genes of Shinobi in him. If this amount of development was anything to go by, he'd be a powerhouse by 16. Suddenly Kakashi turned to his left to see ANBU personnel walk towards Kakashi. After handing him a paper, a swift chunchun and he was gone from the area, 
leaving Kakashi to read the note and see what the matter was. After skimming through it, Kakashi looked towards Rin and Naruto, who was also looking at Kakashi and smiled as Kakashi smiled at her behind his mask. It's time to see the huckage. Kakashi simply said, Conference room. This mission must be carried out swiftly and secretly. We must evacuate anyone who wants to be evacuated. Leave no person behind. Do not get caught. If you are found out, I will not acknowledge that you took this mission or that I even assigned it. Do you understand? Said Hyrosen. H.A.I. Karus the inhabitants of the room. Godspeed then to you all. Get back safe and healthy, said Hyrosen as Unita through C headed out towards Kiri for their special assignment. Heading out of the office, Sarutobi made his way to his office as he had a bunch of meetings today that had to be taken care of, especially the recent news he had received from Kanaha Hospital about entering the office. Hyrosen had to pause a moment at the amount of pandemonium all over his office. Books laid out amongst the floor, juice on his desk, ripped paper, loud laughing and four guardians looking on in mirth and amusement. Yes, this would be the last time he ever arranged a meeting with the Uchiha Makoto with Sasuke, Kakashi and Rin with Naruto and Hyuga Hayashi with Hinata. Kids, said Hyrosen as a drop of orange juice landed on his head, making the three kids laugh. So, Hakuj-sama, what is this meeting about? Asked Makoto as she picked up her son, Sasuke, who seemed to take well to little Naruto as the two had made the mess in the office. The only innocent one being Hinata. It was rather spectacular the rate of development for babies of Nin, Hyrosen thought to himself. Finally getting into business mode, Hyrosen made his way to his seat, in which even more paper was seen shredded, making it known one of the two had been sitting there. As Naruto walked over the midnight hair-colored girl, the three being left to their own devices, Hyrosen sat down with the four guardians. To get straight to the point, I have come across a bit of good news I figured you four would be the first to know, seeing as how the person has been a great factor in your lives and to my knowledge, you were the closest to her, said Hyrosen. Anticipation began to build in Makoto and Rin while the tensing of the jaws of Hayashi and Kakashi were the only thing that could be seen in their features. To get straight to the point, Kashina Uzumaki, get out of my way, yelled a voice from outside. Everybody's head turned to the door to see a bunch of commotion come from the other side before the door was opened and in came Tsunade carting in on a wheelchair, a pale looking woman with long red hair and purple eyes that seemed to change colors periodically. Looking at the kids for a bit, her eyes widened as she laid eyes on the one-year-old blonde-haired child who was currently walking towards her. The atmosphere was silent as the two looked at one another, one in curiosity and the other in rising joy at finally seeing her son. After what seemed like minutes, which was really seconds, Naruto walked up to the teary-eyed woman and instantly seemed to know who she was. He put his arms up in the air, as a signal for her to pick him up, with watery eyes. Kashina scooped up Naruto, albeit a bit slowly as her strength was not all there and began laying pecks to her son's cheeks. Wet hair, said Naruto as he grabbed a fistful of hair and giggled. Yes, red hair Naruto, red hair, whispered Kashina as she cried while holding her son for the first time. Tsunade and everyone else in the room smiled at the reunion between mother and son. For that one second, all seemed to be right with the world. But in the life of Ninja, one second was all that could be salvaged before everything left is disaster. Kiri screams and the sounds of battle could be heard in this cold village as the mother hid her child in the room, hoping for a savior from her deranged husband. Just as the man picked up a knife and raised it to end her life, a kunai stuck into the man's throat, instantly killing him. As he crumpled over in death, an A.N.B. with a cat mask walked up to the lady and offered his hand. If you want to be free from hiding for the rest of your life, take my hand and come with me, said the man as he held his hand out for her to take. After a while, she shakily took her hand, turning around to look for her child only to find her in the arms of another A.N.B. with a bear mask. We must leave now. Nodding his head, the two A.N.B. left the premises, leaving behind the melted ice sculpture of the room in which the child was held in. The Kekai Genkai unknowingly activating in fear. Meanwhile, the captain of the ANB stared down the head of the clan of the Kagata clan. You do not have to fight this battle, you can come with us and live to fight another battle another day, said the ANB captain with a rabbit mask. The clan head nodded. I know, my pride will never let me leave a battle, I live for the moment to fight, I will die fighting, there is no such thing as a retreat for me. However, take the children of my clan, 
they do not deserve to die for something they have no knowledge of. Now you can move and let me die in battle or you shall be the one I battle. Choose your next movement wisely, said the clan head as a huge stake made of bone came out of his hand. After a silent stare down, the ANBU stepped to the side and let the clan members who wanted to fight to the death head off to do battle. Take the children, load them up and let us return to Kanea, said the captain, as the group found all the children and teams left behind. The captain saw a child locked in a cage of bones staring directly at him blankly. Shocked at such barbarity, the captain walked towards the child and opened the cage. Do you want a new life? asked the captain. The child simply stared at him blankly before simply nodding his head. Yes. The child replied, to which he was quickly scooped up and taken to the rest of his clan members for a new life and chance to make his own path in life. Kimimaro Kageya would be a name never forgotten. This small change in scenery would also be a change in the history of Kanaya itself. Sarutobi Backyard, 3 AM. Hiruzen sat down and calmly sipped his tea as he awaited the onslaught of questions to pour out of the two in front of him. He was not disappointed. How? What? When? And why did you neglect to tell you us about the fact that H.E. at this Jiraiya pointed at the equally calm Orkimaru also at the table with a three was actually a double agent working undercover and was actually scouting out the other villages for you and not a traitor to the village, growled Jiraiya in anger, Sunade equally mad. Simple, I would rather you mad at me than you aware of the mission I assigned. Sunade had her own troubles after the untimely passing of Nawaki and Dan, and you were occupied with the training of your students. Why would I put that information, that vital information, onto either of you? What if Sinead got drunk and babbled away at that fact? What if you actually decided to seek Orkimaru out when he was on one of his dangerous scouts? In fact, if you think about it, Orkimaru becoming traitor was the best idea ever, especially when you supplied me with all of the information about his recent movements when he could not relay messages to me, said Hyrosen with a smirk on his face. Watching Jiraiya's face turn from anger to contemplation and finally begrudgingly Jiraiya nodded. You always were three steps ahead of us, said Jiraiya. Make that five. I have ridded my advisors and requested for you three to return immediately for a reason, said Hyrosen, his eyes becoming a bit unfocused in thought before he looked at them one by one. I had a dream, a very scary dream of how things would become like had I not done things immediately. It all came down to the fact that if things continued on, unchanged and looked into, Kanaya would fall. Never to recover for decades, I simply had no plans of seeing my village get raped and pillaged, so I decided it was time to change. But I need people I trust, and unfortunately, you three are all I got. As such, I am going to ask that you three stay in Kanaya. Sunade, your dream of raising medical ninja and having them on three man teams, I have begun making changes to allow you to have that achieved, in the new curriculum. I want your apprentice, Shizun, to teach a medic class. From there you can choose the most potentially fit student and train them. Orokimaru, I want you to run interrogation and experimental discovery for Kanaya. Your knowledge is exceptional and what we need to exceed expectations. Jiraiya, I want you to train my hunter Nin in espionage and hunting. There is none more proficient than you in this matter. Finally I want you three to find three others with potential as you will train them said Hyrosen as he took another sip of tea. Train them to do what? Asked Sinead. To take up the mantle of Sanin of this generation, said Hyrosen, making Jiraiya choke on his tea. Sinead smirk and Orokimaru raise an eyebrow. There is more is there not sensei? Asked Orokimaru suddenly. Hyrosen chuckled. He knew he had chose the correct person for interrogation immediately from that simple question. I want you three to take up a new job now open. Jiraiya sighed already figuring out what his sensei wanted. As my advisors, the field was silent other than the sounds of the cricket in the garden and the sound of water flowing throughout the backyard. After a while, Orokimaru put his cup down and looked at his sensei. I accept. Sunaid seemed to be at odds with herself, battling with the decision before finally sighing. What's the worst that can come of this? I accept, she mumbled. Jiraiya stood up and put his hands in his pocket, turning around. He silently walked off before turning around and looking at his sensei. You've got my acceptance. As long as Tsunade shows up in meetings with a bikini on, said Jiraiya, perverted gleam in his eye, only to get cracked upside his skull with a thrown teacup courtesy of Tsunade. All these years and you're still a perverted toad, said Tsunade. Though Hyrosen and Orokimaru noticed, the sentence had no malice or anger. It had a hint of happiness. After years and years of being away, 
Team Sarutobi had reunited like they never left Kanaha Stadium. One week later, Hiruzen stood up from his seat to address every single Kanaha shinobi under his reign. He had a few things on his mind that needed to be said and as Hakage, he would for the benefit of his village and underlings. Kunochi and shinobi of Kanaha, as Hakage of this village, I feel it is only right that I inform you all of the recent changes the village will be going under. This is all for the focus of maintaining this village as one of the most powerful ninja villages in the elemental country. Hiruzen continued, The civilian council is no more. We will have one representative from the civilian council in meetings at all times concerning the village matters. However, all matter dealing with the shinobi will be between the members of the shinobi council, with any news worth knowing being told to the representative of the civilians. Any ninja, tune in and up will be partaking in a class on politics taught by my former advisors Hamuro Mitakato and Koaru Yutatan. In one week, all Chunin Shinobi and Kanoichi will be asked to come back to the stadium for a one-week course in proper political resources, knowledge and etiquette. This is not debatable. Any Chunin found not to attend will be demoted to Genin effective immediately. He will be notified as to the time of the lesson. The week after will be Junin, then Hunter Nin. Next. The academy lesson plan has been changed to further edify our young and turn them into soldiers. The curriculum has been modified as such, pulling out a scroll and unfurling it. Hiruzen continued with his speech. Children aged 3 to 4 of major clans or any family wanting their children to be ninja, will be entered into preschool. This will teach the children the importance of group interaction, and how to cooperate with other children the same age in addition to young and proper etiquette. From there they will enter what I call secondary preschool from age 5 to 6, where they will begin to pick up on the history of Kanaya, which takes away the need for most of the lessons taught in the old academy curriculum. They will also be introduced to the beginning of identifying hiragana, a basic component of our Japanese writing system in addition to many other lessons monumental to the development of our shinobi. From then on, from age 7 they will enter kindergarten, preparing them for the life of a shinobi, after kindergarten will be an entrance test to balance out and learn what exactly the student should be taking once they actually reach the academy. From there, all children from 8 to 12 will finally be entered to the new academy and they will be split into 8 classes taught by 8 teachers in the following. Genjutsu teaching taught by Karuma clan members. Medical training. The teacher will be announced at a later date. Kenjutsu teaching taught by Harit Gekko. Teijutsu teaching taught by Meito Gai. Ninjutsu teaching taught by Uchiha clan members. History of the Hakage taught by Yumi no Ishigo. Chakra theory taught by Ibisu and Jim otherwise known as field training D-rank missions and endurance training taught by Inizuko clan members, Hiras and Reed. Taking a second to let the newfound information marinate, he continued as such, D-rank missions for Genin are hereby terminated as the final year of academy will be spent making their own money as they are called to do so. With this new curriculum, a higher range of missions will be available for Genin. Tunin and Junin. We will begin this curriculum the upcoming semester to see how effective it is, stated Hiruzen. So far, the entire group Shinobi were going through emotions such as shock, to amazement, to awe, to satisfied, to proud and finally joyful. Things were finally starting to look and become great for Kaneya. But now was time for the finale to the meeting, and one that would surely shock the group. My final announcement is that I have recalled many of our ninja both in hiding and both out handling secret missions for me. As such, returning to Kaneya for the time being are students trained personally by me. You will see them around the village, either in the hospital, in our research and interrogation rooms or our sealing chambers, so please do not be alarmed. Hiruzen stepped back and put his hand down towards the stadium floor, where at the moment nobody was seen. Suddenly three figures were seen landing in the middle, with long black cloaks. One by one they removed their robe hoods to reveal white, black and blonde hair respectively. The shinobi in the stadium seats gasped in surprise at the appearance of the three. Some out of knowledge of what they had done in the third shinobi war, some from the gossip heard about them and others at seeing them in the same area at the same time. I present to you all the return of the Sanin. At this Hiruzen smirked again, ready to drop another bomb. Also my brand new advisors, about half of the shinobi and Kanoichi fainted in shock. Hiruzen smirked. Nothing like schooling the Kanaha shinobi and surprises. Three years later, the currently jogging Naruto Uzumaki was a four years old and was just returning from a second day of preschool under the new academy regiment. The past three years for young Naruto had been amazing. His mother apparently was asleep, something they called a coma 
but Naruto preferred a sleep and was now awake and ready to take up the reins as the Uzumaki clan head. With that being said, today was the day he would be meeting a family member of his clan. Apparently, after Iwa attacked Yuzu Shiogigure, a lot of Uzumaki clan members escaped, spread out and the remaining members were currently living in different parts of the elemental countries. It seemed Kashina had a long lost brother, who was currently making his way towards Kanaya from Suna, and Naruto would have the privilege of getting to know him more as he would be staying in their current clan house until further notice. The Uzumaki clan house was pretty much the Senju clan house being that Hashirama Senju and Mito Uzumaki had married and the clan shared the same space. The only people that inhabited the place currently were Naruto, Kashina and Tsunaid. At the moment, Naruto was sure his mother was training. She had been slowly gaining her strength back. The first year dedicated to motor movement and the next two on exercising her body back into the shape of the feared Kanoichi she was. At this point she was back to Junin level, and would be ready to take up mission solo. In all honesty, the estate of the Senju clan was extremely beautiful. The nature Hashirama had created to fill the house was astounding. From the gate made of redwood bark, which had the clan mark engraved on it, requiring Chakra to pass through it in order to open it was a pathway made of stone with grass on the left and right. You then came to a bridge made of literal tree bark with clear water underneath. You then came up to the front door made of water, which was interesting as it never wet you whenever you walked through, making Naruto believe that it cleansed your spirit. The house was clearly made for a big clan as when you walked in you entered a room the size of Kanaya Stadium. Directly in front was a huge living room for the guests with chairs, table, couches and a tree that grew fruit on the spot. All around the house were small bonsai trees and flowing water. Next came the kitchen, made of wood except the fridge and sink. Of course, the dishes were of fine porcelain imported from all over the nations. A counter was placed in the middle with the fridge on the left, the sink in front and shelves on the right. On both sides of the wall were two stairs that led to the second story. Naruto and Kashina's rooms were on the right, with Tsunade's room on the left side. Guest rooms were also available. Ten rooms, with a private bath on both sides. Naruto felt a bit down at the fact that they were the only ones left, but he was sure his clan members would be found soon enough. Entering his room, which would be a guest room, but was now Naruto's own which was painted a vibrant shade of blue which included his bed directly in front of the door, about 10 feet from the entrance, on the right side from bed being two doors, the one on the left being the bathroom and the one on the left being a walk-in closet. The left side of the room was simply a couch with a TV in front of it, not that Naruto really used it that often. Above the entire room, hanging from the chandelier, was a training dummy Naruto used for target practice, on top of his dresser, also on the left side of the room in the corner, were drawers full of various weapons and sealed tags, papers, ink and more things Naruto would need as a ninja. Naruto changed from his clothing, which consisted of simple green cargo shorts and an orange shirt with his clan spiral, into black shorts with a navy blue plain t-shirt. Naruto headed back out to find his mother in this huge house. The clan had its own sauna room, over 10 different training rooms with various degrees of nature, an underwater pathway that lead to an underground training ground inside of a cave in 40 acre backyard. Eventually, Naruto found Kashina meditating with a long sword in front of her. The sheath was red leather and the handle was wrapped in navy blue cloth. A sheen of blue chakra was around her and the sword as it seemed to sink and manifest into something else. Slowly. But surely, the background began to morph into a red dragon with blue eyes. Naruto's eyes nearly popped out of his head at the sight. Was this Genjutsu? He knew that the sword was rumored to be made from a dragon's fang but did not understand the deep connection between sword and owner just yet. He was still for after all. Naruto knew all about his burden, how could he not? A lot of people try to take the weapon, currently in his bedroom on a mantle encased in powerful Uzumaki clan seals only to get a sharp shock from the weapon, yet it never affected Naruto at all. He had most recently met the Kiwabi, or Kurama. He remembered the massive gate and teeth that followed. After calming down, the fox introduced himself as the Kiwabi. After a lengthy back and forth, filled with sarcasm and anger, Naruto finally got him to omit his true name. The fox replied that he had no other choice but to get to know his life partner, as Kashina called him. However, 
he would always give Naruto a most difficult time as he attempted to be Kurama's first friend. After an awkward moment of Naruto thinking about all of those people that were incorrect about the Kiwabi, Naruto smiled and grabbed a small pebble, a training technique he used to do with his mother when she was getting back in shape. Tossing the pebble with all of his strength, Naruto smiled when Kashina suddenly caught the pebble with her right hand, a smirk also on her face. Smiling at her son, Kashina stretched her back before getting up. She was currently in simple training clothing. Black sweats with a black shirt and standard shinobi sandals, her sword on her shoulder. Back from school already I see? Kashina asked. Yeah, they let us out early. I want to get to the ninja stuff. Learn cool jutsu and save princesses you know? Replied Naruto, posing as a super ninja with his hands on his hips. Smirking slowly, Kashina ran at Naruto full speed before putting the now morph sword to Naruto's neck. The blunt end of course. If you don't know the basics, how can you ever try to defend yourself against the real troubles of the world? Asked Kashina in a sweet voice, with a dangerous edge to it. Good point. Naruto replied, sweating nervously. His mother was fast, but that was faster than fast. He just had to ask how she gained that speed. Danger forgotten. Kashina sighed as Naruto begged her to learn how to do that, jumping up and down in a rush of energy he was known for. If there was anyone Naruto seemed to take after so far, it was definitely her. She felt a bit bad suddenly for all the trouble she caused her teachers and caretakers growing up. Sighing, Kashina made her way back to the house. Maybe when your uncle gets here we can convince him to show you, said Kashina. Struggling a bit as Naruto somehow ended up wrapped around her leg. The brat was fast in his own right. Not to mention, Naruto already had the makings of a strong and powerful shinobi. But he would have to earn his spot as there was a lot he had to learn. But with the plan Kashina had in mind, he would grow at an exponential rate. But for now, he was a brat. He sure did have much to learn. But Kashina was sure he had time for all of that when they began the training he would be receiving. But for now, could you get off my leg? No. Kashina sighed. Brat. Uchiha clan compound. Backyard training grounds. Sasuke watched in awe at the control it had she presented. Every single target had been hit with amazing accuracy. This was why he looked up to his brother. It had she smirked at the obvious awe his brother showed watching how he trained. Soon he would be just as good if he had any say. But now it was time to motivate him some more. A ninja not only needs to train his body, but he needs to train his brain. This is why it is essential to get good grades at the academy and to take every class you are given seriously. Itachi said to Sasuke, Now I challenge you to get the top 3 in all grades when you officially begin and I will begin training you in things not taught at the academy, Itachi said as he turned around, knowing Sasuke would accept without hesitation. You got yourself a deal Itachi ni. Sasuke exclaimed. Itachi nodded his head. He had many dreams for his brother. He would stop at nothing to see it completed. Even if it meant meeting with the Hukits to discuss the recently attained knowledge he had come across. Hyuga residents indoor training facility. Currently the clan head was training with his child while his brother, who was head of the branch house, was securing the area, even though nothing ever occurred. The training seemed to come easy to the child of the main branch. The movement was fluid and the mere fact that the kid was already advancing on to more Jukin techniques made this boy a prodigy. Hayashi was proud of his nephew, but he was even more proud of his four-year-old daughter, Hinata who was currently on the other side training with her mother in Hyuga clan techniques. It seemed that the Hyuga clan Teijutsu did not fit her style of fighting. As such, Hinamori decided to take manners into her own hand and teach her a personal style she had developed. If Hinata learned that style and mastered it, there would probably be no Kanoichi that could defeat her. No offense to the tons of powerful Kanoichi. It was just that Hinamori had smacked Hayashi across the floor with that style of hers. It wasn't possible to defend an attack because of the level of flexibility and the amount of different styles incorporated in the entire style. Things were looking up for the Hyuga clan with these two growing up to lead the clan into the future. With Neji as the clan head and Hinata as the branch clan head, the Hyuga clan would definitely prosper into a new generation of prodigies. Instantly looking to the right as he felt a presence, Hayashi had to stop the groan coming from her throat at the sight of the elders. We must talk Hayashi-san. Follow me. Turning around, the elder walked off, 
with how she's soon following behind. What is it now? Kanaha Gates, 7 p.m. Kashina and Naruto were currently watching the figure coming on the road towards the gates, who is to be Kashina's long-lost brother. Naruto just wanted to see who his uncle was. It was always a good thing to meet new family, and Naruto always wanted to know if his mother was really the only one still alive from the Uzumaki clan. Finally, the figure came into view. He seemed to be at the height of 5 foot 3, with a huge beige cloak covering his face and most of his body. After going to the gate and handing his information to the guards for clearance, the man beelined towards a shaking Kashina. Stopping in front of her, a long silence occurred before the man chuckled. It has been forever tomato, said the voice. Naruto noticing it wasn't that old a voice. Kashina said nothing before slowly walking up to the man and touching his hood. Removing his cloak, red hair was the first feature seen, letting Naruto know immediately that this was his relative. Next was the brown eyes, which was interesting as his mother's was purple, but Naruto did not question it. My brother, Sasori-kun, Kashina gasped, tears falling from her eyes as Sasori smiled and hugged Kashina picking her up and spinning around in joy. Sasori of the Red Sands, S ranked Shinobi out of Suna, known for annihilating over 400 enemy forces in the Third Shinobi War, with the usage of 100 puppets, to hold off an attack on one of the main forts used for transporting goods from Kanaha to Suna. Many wondered why he was not the Kazukage, to which he would simply answer that he found no desire to be stuck in the village taking care of mundane affairs. I tried to come and see you a few years ago, but I was told to return back to Suna as the Kiwabi attacked. But I am here now, and that is all that matters, said Sasori calmly before looking at Naruto. You must be Naruto, said Sasori. Naruto grinned and nodded. Reaching in his cloak, Sasori pulled out a scroll and handed it to him. This is for you to decipher and learn from. It is something I hope will interest you enough to master. Do you know how to mold chakra yet? Sasori asked Naruto. At Naruto's shake of the head in the negative, Sasori's face was blank for a while an uncomfortable feeling for Naruto. However, the feeling faded as after a few seconds, Sasori smiled. Then your uncle will be teaching you how, along with many other things that will benefit you in your growth as a shinobi, said Sasori. Kashina took Naruto's hand and began leading the duo towards the Uzumaki clan. Come, let's go back to the clan house and speak some more. I am sure you must be tired from your travels, said Kashina. Hardly. I am at the peak of my fitness as a shinobi and I have no desire to slack in my fitness," said Sasori calmly, missing the evil gleam in Kashina's eye. Really? We will have to test this belief of yours to see if you can catch up with me. Though I am sure you won't. Couldn't years ago, and you can't now, Kashina replied. Is that a bet? I think it is, you brat. I wouldn't want to beat you into tomato paste with your dear son watching. I can show you true red sand Sasori instead it would be your blood. Naruto's sweat dropped at the somewhat playful bantering between Kashina and Sasori. Can you two stop? You're scaring the civilians, Naruto said calmly. Sasori and Kashina looked at one another than the civilians, who were giving the three a wide berth in the road on the way to the clan house. Realizing they were emanating killer intent, the two cut it off before Sasori looked at Naruto in surprise at him being unaffected by it, which pretty much meant he raised an eyebrow at his nephew. Why aren't you affected by my sister's killer intent? Sasori asked Naruto, who looked up at him and shook his head. Kasan is scary when she doesn't get what she wants, Naruto whispered to Sasori. Sasori and Naruto both shivered, before continuing on the way to the Uzumaki Senju residence. Nothing like family time with the Uzumakis. Hukage Tower. Hiruzen read the scroll sent from Kumo and instantly summoned his advisors to discuss the new development. It seems that Kumo is interested in signing a treaty between us. It seems the Rakage wants to let bygones be bygones. Hiruzen told to the three Sanin before getting blunt. I don't believe this man for a second. They want an excuse to come to Kaneha. No one randomly comes out with some treaty years after this Kiwabi situation occurs. I am even surprised Iwa or Kumo did not attack us in our construction efforts. But I am also intrigued as to what he is planning. I think I want to accept their talks and see what occurs, said Hiruzen. The three were silent before Jiraiya spoke. Do it. We can see what exactly they have in mind, while we have a few root A and B watch the group of delegates. This way we can monitor them without having to explain our actions as we don't officially know about the root unit. Nodding in agreement, Orokimaru spoke. I too think something is up, but I believe we should go about it as if nothing is amiss, 
keeping our tree hugging philosophy for a bit longer might just work out in the end. They will think we have no clue as to what is going on, only to find out that we knew from the beginning what was occurring. Besides, doing something in Kanaha with all of the new security we have set up would be close to suicide. What Orkimaru was referring to, was the influx of Kiri bloodline clans that had come to Kanaha to live a new life. It seemed that some from the Kagata clan, rumored to go and do battle in Kiri, had changed their minds, and also made their way to Kanaha. Now, Kanaha had a huge nation of shinobi with various abilities, skills and techniques, some even being added to the Forbidden Scroll secured deep within the Hukage Towers. Orokimaru had scouted out and recruited tons of new talent from Rice Country, Kiri, Land of Snow, Waterfall and more. In addition, he had also added the Huga clan into the Kanaha military police, which was a frowned upon move considering the pride between Huga and Uchiha clan members, to after a couple tussles, the two began fully transitioning into a smooth functioning, well-oiled machine with the addition of the Buram and Inizuko clan members. As of late, the crime rate in the red light district had all but been taken care of, with the amazing detection abilities of these clan members. Sunade simply stood up and turned for the door. Bring them, and if they try to pull a fast one, Sunade made a fist and the three became wide-eyed as the door snapped along with her fingers. I will personally crush them myself, nobody tries to mess with Kanaya, and we are the best. Get someone to fix the door and take it out of my tab, I have more issues to attend to. With that Sinead was gone, leaving the three in silence. After a few minutes of literal silence, Jiraiya sighed. Maybe that bet to wean her off of sake was a bad idea. Orokimaru and Hiruzen simply nodded in agreement. Namake's house, living room. Kashina, Sasori and Naruto sat on the couches simply discussing life and how things were growing up, sharing with Naruto how life back in Yuzen Shiogigure used to be. Suddenly the sound of Tsunade entering the room changed the atmosphere to a bit tense as Sasori, who slowly stood up, and the still standing Tsunade sized each other with her eyes. The silence was broken as Tsunade snorted and walked over to the Suna Shinobi, ruffling his hair. You brat. Good to see you after all of these years, Tsunade mumbled as she sat down. I dislike when you do that, the part that makes me angrier is the fact that you know that already, Sasori said. That is precisely why I will continue to do it, said Tsunade. How do you know each other? asked Naruto, a bit surprised at the encounter the two had. I used to visit the land of Whirlpool when clan relations were great, I actually knew of most of Kashina's relatives, especially this little brat said Tsunade cheekily. Kashina chuckled before clearing her throat, bringing attention upon herself. Looking at Sasori and Tsunade and nodding, Kashina turned to Naruto and looked at him seriously. There is actually another reason as to why your uncle is here Naruto. I was waiting for Jiraiya but it seems I will have to begin without him. The reason why Sasori, Tsunade and I are here all at once is because soon we are going to be starting your training to become a shinobi, said Kashina. Naruto's eyes widened and he swiftly jumped on the seat of the couch. Yes, I can become the coolest shinobi of Kana ever, better than everyone before me, the strongest, quickest, and coolest ever. I can wait to tell me Fryurk. Naruto shrieked while jumping up and down in his excitement, only to get pulled back to reality as Kashina grasped his arm. However, you won't be able to tell your friends Naruto. The training you are to be going under will take many years to complete and as such, you will not be able to hang out with your friends for a rather long time after school, said Kashina as her eyes softened at Naruto's curious expression. How long will I be training for? Naruto asked. That's when I come in, said a voice from behind him. Turning around to see who it was, Naruto smiled upon seeing Jiraiya come into the room. You see, the training you will be going in is a very advanced type of training. It has only been used a few times because of the strain put on your body in real life. You will be training for four years. At this, Jiraiya became extremely serious, to the point of making Naruto gulp. But in reality, you will be trained for decades worth of combat, skills, knowledge and more aspects of Akanaha Shinobi. Naruto was a bit silent at the newly told information. He had but only one more question that needed to be asked. When do I begin? Kashina knew this question would come, and as much as she wanted it to begin now, she knew he had just begun school so they would have to wait a bit in four years. The strain is too much so you need to continue to develop and grow in age and structure. For now, enjoy your couple of weeks in school, make friends, 
because soon you'll be pretty busy. Nodding his head, Naruto was silent before he smirked and grasped his right wrist with his left hand and balled his right hand into a fist. Looking his mother into the eyes, Naruto spoke. I will do this training and I will succeed, that's a promise of a lifetime, Naruto said, his eyes sparkling with determination. Kashina, Tsunade and Jiraiya smiled while Sasori chuckled, at the same time. The four thought similar thoughts. He is definitely a Nuzumaki. Suddenly, a knock interrupted the discussion, getting up to see who it was, Kashina opened up to find a rather irritated looking Hayashi standing at the front door, his wife Hinamori behind him also looking worried. We need to talk, it's about Hinata. Time skip four years later final day of semester. Have fun on your vacation, yelled out Kiva, as he grabbed Naruto in a headlock and ruffled his hair with a nugi. Over the years, Naruto had gained a lot of good friends in primary preschool, none more than most of the major clans of Kaneya. His two best friends were the sometimes shy, sometimes unemotional, but sometimes outspoken Hyuga Hinata and the calm, level-headed Uchiha Sasuke. The three could always be seen playing together, eating together and even napping in the same row of their bunkers whenever it was time to sleep. This in turn created good relations with the Uzumaki. Hyuga and Uchiha clan, which already had a great foundation, despite the prideful rivalry between Hyuga and Uchiha clan members, Makoto, Hinamori and Kashina could always be seen having tea time while their kids were out in the backyard being kids, it seems at a young age Hinata was smitten with Naruto, always blushing whenever his attention was upon her. However, her Hyuga pride would always show and she would deny such feelings. It also seemed that a small friendly rivalry was apparent in Naruto's and Sasuke's actions as they always attempted to outdo one another. Walking towards the Uchiha compound with Sasuke and Hinata, the three stopped at the gate. Sasuke said nothing with his back facing the two, before swiftly turning around and holding out his pinky. I want you to promise on your Uzumaki name that when we start the academy we will fight and see who is the strongest, Sasuke said to Naruto, with a grin on his face, which was soon mirrored by Naruto. You got yourself a bet, you better train hard, when I get back, I am going to beat you, said Naruto, to which Sasuke scoffed. Yeah right, in your dreams. See you in Naruto, said Sasuke, as he entered his clan compound, happy he had a friend he could train with once he got stronger. Naruto smiled after a while before chuckling. Grabbing Hinata's hand, who blushed at the touch, Naruto made his way to the Hyuga clan compound to drop his friend off for what could be the last time in a long time. It seemed both of his friends were going to different places for clan business, with Sasuke heading to visit the Fire Lord and Hinata's family off to do business in various lands before the semester began. So, Hinata, are you going to be training to become a strong Kunoichi too? Asked Naruto to his red-faced friend who nodded in affirmation before finding her voice. I plan on being the strongest Kanoichi in Kaneya, as well as. Hinata trailed off at the end, cheeks red at the thought she was thinking to herself about, thinking it was something girls just did when they did not want the boys to know what else they dreamed of, as most of the girls in his classroom did that when they were shy. Naruto continued, I believe you are going to be strong, then I will come back strong, and we can be strong together, and maybe even get married and make strong kids. Wouldn't that be great Hinata? Hinata asked Naruto, as he caught the feigning girl. Naruto had a lot to learn about girls at 8 years old. Talking about marriage was something ingrained in any young girl's head, especially with their first crush, which in Hinata's case was Naruto. Shrugging his shoulders, Naruto sat down by the tree in front of her house and put her head on his lap, patiently waiting for her to wake up not seeing the camera or hearing the flashes from the person taking the pictures. When Hinata awoke, she found herself leaning on the now napping Naruto with her mother standing in front of her, a smile on her face. You two had been sleeping for a couple of minutes, I didn't want to wake you two up, said Hinamori. Getting up, which in turn, woke up Naruto, Hinata whispered a sorry to Naruto, who waved it off. I have no idea as to why you fainted, but it is alright, I have to go home now though, Mom says I have to pack for my trip once school is done, but this is for you. Naruto reached into his pocket and handed her a red box with nicely designed blue flowers on the outside. Opening it, Hinata gasped as two navy blue ribbons were seen inside. They seemed to be made of metal and looked rather sturdy. All in all, it looked like a rather expensive gift. Mother said I should give that to you, seeing as how navy blue is one of your favorite colors. I think it's for your hair, said Naruto. Rubbing the back of his head nervously, he did not know why she was making him feel weird, 
Was he hungry? His stomach was acting up. He would ask his mother what this was about as soon as he arrived home. Hinata went up to Naruto and hugged him, thanking him for the going away present. Naruto hugged her back before letting her go, with a bow to Inamori, who simply smiled at the cute little boy. Naruto was on his way home, leaving behind a blushing 8-year-old girl and a futuristic thinking mother who was already thinking of ways to get her little baby what she deserved. Happiness and freedom from the old-fashioned mannerisms of her clan. Kanaha gates three hours later. After packing his necessary items, he would need for the years to come inside of his scroll. Naruto was currently with Kashina and Sasori standing by the gates with Tsunade and Jiraiya, heading out to visit Tsuna for the summer. Everyone ready? Asked Tsunade who would be staying behind while the four went off to train Naruto. Everyone nodded except Jiraiya, who made a joke about missing a kiss to leave. Tsunade smirked. Close your eyes then, she said sweetly. Too naive and perverted to catch the innuendo, Jiraiya leaned forward lips puckered, only to receive a fist to his face and jaw, the shockwave moving dust from the ground and traveling off to Jiraiya as he was lifted off the ground and into the sky at mock speeds. A gleam appearing signaling he was off to Suna Express Female Punch. Dusting her hands off, Tsunade bent down and left a kiss mark on a blushing Naruto instead. Say hi to Chio when you get to Suna. Don't forget to eat your vegetables, unless you want to be the shortest in your group, Tsunade said, knowing that his height was a sore spot. Naruto turned, only to see his mother and uncle already halfway out of view and bickering. Hey, cried Naruto as he ran to catch up. Out would leave the 8 years old Naruto but returning will be a shinobi with knowledge and power to defend Kanaha and his family to the best of his abilities. Kanaha, undisclosed location 12 a.m. midnight. The room was extremely silent at the recent information received from the person in front of them. This was no ordinary room. During the founding of Kanaha, the first Hukage had constructed a meeting area located inside of the biggest tree in Kanaha, which was surrounded by many other trees. This tree also led to many different exit routes and entrances that all of the clans of Kanaha were able to use whenever the need for a secret discussion came up. At the moment, Hiruzen and his students, also named his new advisors, were sitting down in front of the current person who set up this meeting. Uchiha Inuchi, current Uchiha clan prodigy, A&B captain and one of the most talked about shinobi in Kanaha, had just informed Hiruzen and his new advisors about the fact that his clan, the elders and his fathers, in addition to some of the Kanaha police force, had been speaking amongst one another about ending the life of Hiruzen and taking over Kanaha with Fugaku being the Godain cage. They felt a bit angered at the fact that, as co-founders of Kanaha, they should have their hands in the affairs of Kanaha. Some said they were placed in the corners of Kanaha so they could be watched easier. Apparently, some of the Uchiha clan members did not agree with this coup edit and were trying to talk sense into the unreasonably belligerent Uchiha members, only to come up empty as they continued to plot, causing Itachi to report to Hiruzen. But that was not the reason the room was silent as Hiruzen had already known of the coming storm, which was why he had recently gotten rid of his advisors. The decisions they made in his dream came back to bite them in the future, even if it was a dream. He made sure to change that as soon as possible. This is what you will do Itachi. Find out who disagrees with this decision, write their name down. Find all of the conspirators that want to take Kanaya for their own. Then I want you to take a mission out of town. In fact, the entire group of people who are shinobi that believe in Kanaya first, will be away on a mission. I want the non-shinobi members of your clan to watch the children. I will be having a meeting with the remaining members of the clan. From there, I will take care of the rest. Have no fear young Itachi. Everything will be taken care of. I know how hard of a decision it was to report to us about the current situation of your clan but please know that you coming here has saved more lives than what would have occurred if you had not come, said Hiruzen. Bowing slightly, Itachi nodded and made his way out of the chambers. Once the chamber doors closed, Hiruzen wasted no time. Tsunade, Orokimaru, Jiraiya, how do you think we should take care of this? Not wasting a second, Orokimaru, Tsunade and Jiraiya answered. Seal off the entire room, said Jiraiya. And in there, we will release an odor the scentless virus that affects the brain, implementing situations in which they are not really in, but every action they do, will cause them to react, while a paralyzing sensation corrupts the body slowly and meticulously, entered Orokimaru, his voice full of glee at the thought. Or you can enter the virus in the tea as well to deepen and quicker the effect, countered Sinead. But you must also get a bit sick in the midst of the meeting, causing you to end the meeting early, 
but you arrive late to not arouse suspicion, said Jiraiya. The virus will cause them to suffer a heart attack, brutally kill themselves, or become a vegetable with no cure. The beautiful thing about the drug I have created, which me and my apprentice have called it the scarecrow is that the air virus will fade from the air after about 5 minutes. You must make sure some people do not attend that meeting however, we do not need them all to die suddenly. Keep 2 or 3 members alive, then send them on a mission in which they fail with their lives, added Orkimaru. Hiruzen nodded. Good idea, but why not just put the virus in their water and alert the loyal members do not under any circumstances use any of the water from the system they have? Hiruzen asked. The three Sanin blinked owlishly at their sensei at the idea. Why did I not think of that? Jiraiya asked himself. That makes more sense actually, it would show that we had nothing to do with the death, it was a simple virus in the water system. Sunaid said. In fact, let's up the ante, poison everyone, just to show that it was not a conspiracy, Orokimaru said. But then people would also have to pass away to show it was not a fluke, Jiraiya also countered. That is also a good point. How are we going to do this without causing suspicion? Sunaid asked. Who said they had to die in one day? Accidents happen all the time, Hiruzen replied. After a while, a chuckle came from Orokimaru followed by a snort by Jiraiya and a loud guffaw from Tsunade. The ideas were endless. As the group discussed the many methods they could do to get rid of this issue, more pieces of the future were being moved, especially the most important shinobi in all of the elemental countries, the legend to be, the phenomenon that had untapped ability and intelligence that would rival Uchiha Itachi and Hate Kakashi respectively. His name would grow to be a household name, the savior of the nation, the one ninja that would become the strongest of the strong, the elite, the remarkable, the boy. Currently grasslands between Kamiya and Suna. Uzumaki Naruto, you have 5 seconds to get to my feet now, we have work to do. Get up now. Bellowed the voice of Kashina Uzumaki as she stood in the middle of the huge area, awaiting her son to come. L, maybe in a decade or so, but not now. Naruto arrived albeit rather slow as he tried to adjust to the new heavier density in the air. It seemed as if he was wearing 50 pounds just walking. Apparently, the seals on his body would work out his strength training. His outfit was simply a navy blue body suit that felt like it molded around his body and ninja sandals. Alright, I am here. So, what are we going to be doing? Asked Naruto, to which Kashina's smirk disappeared, replaced with a very serious and combat-ready look. Walking up to a board next to a waiting Sasori, which was rather organized, to which made Naruto question inwardly, where did the board come from? Sasori began speaking. It's rather simple. For the past two years we have been training you in chakra control exercises, which included tree climbing, water climbing, waterfall traveling, weighted rock climbing, leaf balancing, and various tests in your level of knowledge, information gathering, training your body to memorize the basic stances and kata choreographed patterns or movements in over five different styles and worked on the speed of your hand seals, both with both hands and single-handed seals. For the next few months we will be working on the following. Week 1, Teijutsu Kashina, Sasori. Week 2, Kenjutsu Kashina. Week 3, Genjutsu Kashina. Week 4 and 5, Ninjutsu Kashina, Jiraiya. Week 6, Specialized Fields, Jiraiya, Sasori. Week 7, Etiquette of a Clan Member and Clan Head Kashina, Sasori. Week 8, Poison Usage and Detection Kashina, Jiraiya. Week 9, Espionage Jiraiya. Week 10, History of Kanuha Kagura and Yuzashio Gigure Jiraiya, Kashina, Sasori. Naruto paled at all the information that would be crammed into him. It also explained why he had been finally allowed to bring his sword currently in a scroll and in one of the seals on his body. How am I going to learn all of that? Asked Naruto. At that Kashina smiled. What do you know about the cage Benshin? Three months later Suna. The wide expanse of sand was endless. Not a sound was heard. Not a vibration felt. Fire release. Dragon fire. Water release. Waterfall wall. A huge dragon smashed into a wall made of pure chakra before two blurs were seen moving all across the room traveling at high speeds. A left roundhouse kick was defined reflected with a right elbow block, which grabbed the offending leg and picked it up before spinning in high speeds. Finally releasing the person, who seemed to, in the air, stop and push off an invisible wall, flew right back at the person before front flipping with a left heel drop. The attacker connected as the defender brought their hands up to block, bringing up a huge crater in the earth, before jumping away and dodging a flurry of random punches. 
the crater created slowly patching up as if nothing occurred. The flurry of punches were continuously blocked, hand for hand and movement for movement as a stalemate soon came as neither attacker or defender seemed to be giving up. The attacker surprised the defender however, as a hook attacked the defender in the jaw making them twisted in the air twice before landing on his back. A ninja sandal was placed on the chest of the heavily breathing loser. Good job keeping pace with me, but always keep your guard up, especially your face. It is the easiest way to knock someone out, said the lady with her foot on the boy's chest. Good point. Can you get off me now? Asked Naruto, as he found it hard to breathe now. The massive sands of Suna Endless, Humid air and the weights they were both wearing were steadily increasing as the day continued all combined into a winded Naruto, which was a word most wouldn't associate him with. Kashina tapped her chin in thought, secretly enjoying watching Naruto squirm. Make me, she said in a playful tone. Naruto growled before moving. Naruto's right leg flailed up and kicked Kashina in the thigh before Naruto kipped up as she jumped in the air, to which she landed and received a drop kick to her chest as Naruto back flipped off the kick and landed on his toes before jumping in the air and smashing his knee into Kashina's face, which she blocked, but smirked at his uncanny mixes of Teijutsu. Good, now two more hours and we can finally get out of here, said Kashina. Naruto nodded in excitement. It had been three grueling months, eight weeks in Suna, and with the help of the cage punch and years worth of tons of training, learning and more training, it was finally time to get back to Kaneha. Putting her hands up to signal the end of the spar, Kashina's face turned serious however. There are things you need to know right now concerning the state of affairs back in Kaneha, Kashina said. Naruto raised his eyebrows. What could have possibly happened in the three months outside of Kaneha? It could not be that bad, could it? Huga clan house. Another Huga branch member went flying onto the floor sprawled out and unconscious. Another soon went flying into the wall before crashing through it. Three more soon followed suit. Another got sent back flipping to the floor and two more sent into various chairs and another through a table respectable. Hayashi and Hizashi sipped their tea in a silent manner, moving the tea kettle as another clan member went through the table, or what would be where the table was had Hayashi not moved it. The two placed their chairs back and continued sipping calmly. What powerful children we have raised, Hayashi said to Hizashi, who also nodded in the middle of the training field, back to back was a 10 and 8 year old Neji and Hinata respectively, blindfolded with their Byakugan off, simply using their senses. The two were currently laying waste to the fellow members around their age from both main and branch houses. Maybe we should call this off before their parents complain too much about injured youth, said Hizashi. Hayashi nodded and stood up. Enough, Hayashi said authoritatively. Nothing can be heard but the sound of groans and walls, chairs and tables cracking. Hinata and Neji, respectively, took their blindfolds off and stood at attention towards the two clan heads. You both have done a good job today, however the reason we had you back to back was so that you two would cover the other's weak spot. This is the most challenging thing to face as a Hyuga. Not many people know of the Hyuga weak spot as we keep that fact to ourselves. It seems your awareness training has been paying off however, as not one of your attackers have seemed to lay a hand on you. Your training for today is over, you may do whatever you wish for the rest of the day. Hayashi stated. The two bowed before making their way outside. Hinata, called out Hayashi. Said person stopped and turned around, her long hair following her as she moved. Her face was the epitome of emotionless. Nothing could be seen in her eyes. Even her stance was already ready for movement. Hayashi was proud. Despite what occurred in the past three months, his daughter had blossomed into a worthy Huga clan heiress. I am proud of you, said Hayashi. Emotion clear in his voice. Just like that his warrior princess's stoic visage crumbled as her eyes widened and she smirked before schooling her face and coughing. T thank you father. She replied as strong as she could but berated herself mentally for the stutter as she and Neji left the grounds to shower off. Her friend would finally be back and she could hardly wait to see him. Hinata rushed inside so that she could hang out with her friends. Navy ribbons flying in her hair. Huckage Tower. The Huckage sat at his seat silently appraising his new rivals. He had reason to do so. As the last time someone from this village came through, a quarter of the Uchiha clan were found dead and poisoned and two Hyuga clan members had been almost kidnapped. Luckily the children were retrieved and the kidnapper brutally erased from existence. This led to a very heated discussion back and forth until the Reikage himself came to Kaneha. As such, the current Reikage, a arrived as more knowledge developed. It seemed the Kumo Nin was not even a part of Kumo anymore, 
simply a man who had been around during the Third Reichage regime, and had still been one of the Nin who wanted to kidnap Hyuga clan members to experiment on. The man ambushed the real Kumo delegate and murdered them, taking their place, with some hired Nin of his own. They infiltrated and took the Hyuga clan head children, Neji and Hinata respectively. They found Neji at the border and Hinata at the valley. It seemed the man who had taken her was found dead halfway there. The most troubling of it all was a very powerful seal was found on the abdomen of the poor Hyuga heiress, with not even Jiraiya aware of what it contained. After clearing her as not a danger to Kaneya, the heiress was released back to her family. The fact of a seal that unknown and powerful meant someone else was at foul play in this plot. Sandame had his suspicions as to what the seal contained, but until Kashina returned, he could not develop the information needed, so sadly, the matter had to be left alone until her arrival next week. While bittersweet, they were able to blame the Kumo Shinobi of the mysterious deaths of a quarter of the Uchiha clan, saying he had poisoned the water systems of the Uchiha clan house, effectively wiping out the many who planned on trying to take over Kaneha in a revolt. Next to A was the current 8th Jinchiriki, B, who was simply writing in his notepad, apparently, he was a rapper of sorts. But the reason he was back was the currently emotionless women standing at attention behind the two. Also in the room was the newly appointed temporary clan head, Makoto Uchiha, and Hyuga clan head, Hizashi, who had arrived from watching his son and niece train not too long ago. Behind the huckage were the Sanin themselves, also steadily watching the Reikage and Jinchiriki, with an entire squad of A and B in the shadows looking for any sudden movement of attack. Finally, after an intense stare down and silence, aside before finally speaking, as I have stated in my letter, the men who had attempted to kidnap the Hyuga clan head's son and niece, and further poison the Uchiha clan, was a missing nin for over 20 years. The bodies of my official delegates were found buried in a ditch not too far from Kumo. I personally do not see why my village is at fault. As this, the room tensed up as A clenched his fist trying to rein his anger in. Kumo was a nation that built itself on being the strongest but also the most reserved. For something of this magnitude to take place, really irked him. Finally sighing and opening his hand, he continued. But while the man was out of my village, and we have yet to capture him, we are thankful to Kaneya for taking care of our problem. As a thank you and sign of good faith I am here to make a trade with you and if possible, strike an alliance and deal. If Hyrosen was anybody else, his mouth would have dropped and the pipe in his hand would have dropped, but the shocked look on Hizashi's, Makoto's, Tsunade's and Jiraiya's face had spoken volumes as to how surprising his announcement was. After a very long silence and unwavering eye contact between two cages, Hiruzen spoke. I am all ears Reikage Sama. No matter what the decision is, I have decided that I will be giving the Uchiha clan, as a small token of their tragic loss over 10 of our most forbidden techniques and 1 million yen. Though I know this will not bring back the lost souls my missing nun has brought, it is still something I believe I could do to help the pain of such a great loss. I will personally pay for the funeral services as well. Finally, I will be giving to the village of Kanaha to enter your ranks, a Kumo nen to be both the trading piece and ambassador for Kumo. As a sign of good faith, she is one of the strongest genin out of Kumo and the Jinchuriki of the two-tailed cat, Yujidoni. Now Hyrosen did drop his pipe. He was now immensely interested in such a thing. What do you want in return? A sat up straighter. I want the body of my missing Nin, and I will be giving you the price for his head as it is you who have captured him. The next part of what I want may be controversial, but I see it as another sign of good faith. I have been told that the Hyuga clan has both a main and branch clan. To me, personally speaking and to be blunt, I find it inhumane to put another family member in servitude and have them be under you at your beck and call. It is as if the branch clan are no longer humans of their own will as they are enslaved by their own kin. The tension broke as the head of the branch clan Hizashi chuckled. Reikage san I have never met you, but I can already see you are a man of unwavering belief that the strong will always persevere. I too agree that the customs of the Hyuga clan is too old fashioned and inhumane. I can see where you are going and what you are requesting. If I am right, you wish to have my branch clan members, if they choose, build another clan in Kumo to strengthen the possible alliance we would have, and one would also be an ambassador of Kumo. Am I right? A simply smiled as well and nodded his head. Sarutobi was stunned. It was not a bad plan at all. Kumo and Kanaha would become allies, they would give up their two-tailed Jinchiriki, and in exchange, 
the branch members, all with caged bird seals, so their secrets would be protected, would form a clan in Kumo. They would also receive the bounty for the missing and and probably more if the talks continued. I will think of this decision, for now, we have a luxurious hotel room for your stay as we think about this proposal, but as you have stated, since Yujita was now the ambassador for Kumo and Kaneya, I think it is only fear she stays with one of the prominent clans in Kaneya. I was thinking of suddenly a voice called out. I shall take care of young Yujito Hokagasama. Red hair flowed in the wind, as the person who spoke sat on the window ledge, surprising a majority of the room as they had not felt her coming in at all. The recognition flowed in the eyes of A. Yujito, and Killer B as there in the flesh was Uzumaki Kashina. While Kumo was not in Kashina's favorite list due to their past, she was willing to take in a kindred Jinchuriki. The Uzumaki clan was back from vacation. Makoto inwardly relaxed at the fact that Kashina was back in Kanaya from her vacation. If there was any time she would be in need of a friend, now was that bowed down to the floor. It would be an honor to be under the care of one of the strongest Kanoichi in Kanaya next to Tsunade, Tsum and Yuzuka, Anko Maitarashi, Makoto Uchiha, Kuranayuhi and the late Mito Uzumaki. Then it is decided. Please enjoy your stay in Kanaya, Hiruzen said. Senju compound hours later. Naruto Uzumaki, sat in the backyard silently contemplating the current events. So, Hinata has an unknown seal on her her personality shifting as a result. Most of Sasuke's clan has been wiped out in an accident that involved water being poisoned through a leak of their gas, making the clan move further into Kaneya, in fact not too far from us now, and Makoto was the clan head as Fukagu was found dead apparently chasing after the delegates from Kumo, who were in fact missing Nin. Asked Naruto. Yes, that and we will be having a new possible clan member staying in this house, as such, I want you to treat her with the utmost respect as she is older than you," said Kashina. Naruto remained silent before finally speaking. Understood, Naruto replied, making Kashina smile. The training for young Naruto was extremely beneficial, as he had abandoned his childish ways and fully embraced the shinobi ways, making his own nendo to never give up and fight for all that is right, unknowingly following the Uzumaki clan creed. Can I go lay down now? I am tired, Naruto asked making Kashina sweat drop. Fine, go on brat, Kashina said, letting Naruto make his way to his room, that he had not been in for over three months. Naruto made it to his room and instantly collapsed into the bed, hoping the area was not dusty. After a few minutes of feeling the comfort of being back on his bed, Naruto sat up and sat in the position. He had to take care of some business and gather his thoughts. Two hours later, a sound was heard which made Naruto realize the guest must have arrived and Kashino was calling for him. Naruto left his room, changing into black slacks and a maroon shirt, his hair all over his face as he decided he did not want to tame it. His mother said he looked like a young Minato anyway, so he preferred it that way. He had grown a bit more, from the intense training and healthy diet he was forced to endure. He was the peak of a healthy 8-year-old boy. But that was beside the point, time to get this over with. Making his way to the staircase, Naruto decided to be a bit flashy to show off his new attained training. Jumping down the steps, while flipping twice in the air, Naruto landed on his two feet and flipped his hair up and smirked. I'm here ka. Naruto's face turned instantly red as the huckage, the sanin, the wreckage of Kumo, his guards, and the jinchuriki of the eight tails and two tails and Kashina looked at him with various faces of amusement, confusion and mirth. Nice of you to join us, Naruto. I'd like to introduce you to the wreckage and his brother, Kirabi, and Yujito who will be staying with us for the foreseeable future. Naruto laid eyes on Yujiro and instantly the room disappeared because all he could see was her long straight blonde hair, dark eyes. She had on Kumo gear, her headband proudly on her forehead, purple blouse, black pants and ninja shoes with a red belt around her waist, kanai holster on her right thigh, purple fingerless gloves, white beads around her left hand and an expression of emotionless, but in her eyes he could see she was full of wonder at who he was. Jiraiya slowly smirked at the expression on Naruto's face as he went from shock to emotionless, and then his eyes and whole stance changed as he stood up. Instantly he shifted into a true shinobi ready to move like a well-coiled spring and graceful in his movements as he, in what seemed like three steps, crossed the huge dining room to where Yujito was standing, bending down on one knee. Naruto took up her right hand and laid a small kiss on it, making her show an emotion of surprise as her eyebrow rose. It is a pleasure to meet you Yujiro-chan, 
I hope me and you can become great friends in the foreseeable future and I will be your guide for Kanaha and hopefully more, call me Naruto, the boy said smoothly, and if you could hear, a genjutsu was created with smooth sounding jazz playing in the background as Naruto's tunnel vision eyes peer deep into Yujiro's curious eyes. Kirabi slowly smirked. The boy was good. He was respectful and knew how to comfort people. Not to mention, he knew how to make an entrance. Not a wasted movement in this landing and jump. Sunade and Kashina growled at the boy's brash and usual love stricken ways. The cages said nothing but chuckled at the scene in front of them. Blushing a bit in embarrassment, Yujiro simply nodded as words escaped her. Did this brat know how older than her she was? But not everyone seemed as amused. Kashina growled and grabbed Naruto by the ear, producing a yell from the blonde as his mother smashed her forehead into his. When I said make her feel welcome, I did not mean to seduce her, you brat. She growled at him, making the occupants of the compound sweat drop. Naruto shook his head and glared back at his mother as he pushed back in annoyance. This is different, I'm just being nice and accommodating Dad Bayo. You're 8 and she's older than you, a respected junin. Show some respect before I beat it out of you, Dad Bane. Kashina growled back as she balled her hands into a fist to show how serious she was. Bring it on you old lady. I'll beat you to a pulp and embarrass you in front of Kumo. Naruto growled right back. Yeah, yeah. Ahem. A voice cleared their throat. Both hot-headed Uzumaki turned to see everyone looking at them in various facial expressions. Dropping Naruto onto his butt. Kashina cleared her throat and smoothed out her shirt before laughing and acting like nothing happened. Ah, just a having some fun usual mother-son banter, nothing serious. She said laughing as she scratched the back of her head in nervousness and embarrassment. Unknowingly, she was mirrored by her son. Hey hey, yeah, it's always lively in the Senju Uzumaki house, Naruto said, getting up and side hugging his mother. Cause everyone to sweat drop deeper. Just another day in the Uzumaki household. Waking up, Naruto instantly deducted two things. It was the first day at the real academy. He had not seen any of his old classmates in three months. Simply imagining how amazing and how scary his first day would be, Naruto got up and headed to the bathroom to prepare for his first day at the brand new curriculum in Kaneya. Half an hour later, a fully washed and fresh Naruto exited his bathroom wearing simple civilian gear, tan cargo shorts, navy blue t-shirt, Uzumaki spiral in the front, and blue standard ninja shoes with a messenger bag full of the necessary books and items he would need. Naruto figured, none of the other students knew about sealing scrolls yet, and he was trying to fit in, so a regular bag would not grab attention. Heading to the kitchen for some food to wait for his mother, Naruto heard the sounds of the fridge being opened and a nice sounding voice humming an unknown song. Remembering that he had guessed, Naruto composed himself before making his way to the kitchen counter. Good morning. Naruto said as he entered the kitchen. Yujiro turned around slowly, her hair moving in slow motion to Naruto, and those dark eyes that captivated him shine under the light again before a small, nervous smile appeared. Morning, replied Yujiro. Naruto put out his hand in a fist suddenly, gaining Yujiro's attention at the odd move. Observing the simple gesture, Yujiro looked at him with a questionable look on her face. Karama wants to connect with you. Naruto said simply, cautioning Yujiro to look at him in surprise. He is already connected to his BU, even knows his name. After a few minutes of silence, Yujiro spoke, not even acknowledging the outstretched fist. You are not going to hit on me again are you? You do know I am 5 years your senior? She asked with a wary shift in her body. Naruto chuckled, a blush on his face before getting signed. His mother had seriously broke it to him swift and early as to why his actions, while amusing initially, could come back to bite him and his village in the end. Lowering his hand he immediately bowed deeply. I'm sorry. Maybe I am indeed too young for you. Being as how you are here as an ambassador, I will kill my attraction towards you and mold it into seeing you as an older sister. I promise to protect you on behalf of the Uzumaki clan, Naruto said, looking into her eyes to show how serious he was as he got back up and resumed outstretching his hand. Truce? Yujiro smiled after a moment. While embarrassed initially at the gesture, she respected the obvious shift. He was not yet a genin and she took her current mission and position serious. Being pestered by him would compromise her role as guest under the clan house. What if they were to later on in the years become an item and it fell apart? For the sake of her village, Yujiro would never go for the boy in front of her. Thankful for the clearing of the air and bumping his fist, a rush of chakra ran through the two of them, 
is the connection between Kurama and Matatsabi, sinking the two into a new brother-sister bond that only other Jinkariki could understand. Years down the line, the two would look back on this day and understand how monumental the connection was. A half awake Kashima came down to find two laughing kids eating breakfast together, dishes washed and a steaming hot plate waiting for her on the side. So then, I get up out of my seat, and it pushes Kiba into Sasuke and they kiss. Yujiro chuckled in laughter as Naruto told her stories upon stories of his training, and his encounters as a kid before he went on vacation. I see you two are getting to know each other better, Kashina said as she grabbed her chopsticks to eat her breakfast. Naruto has some rather crazy adventures. Is it true that he used to wear an orange jumpsuit when he was five for a whole year and wouldn't change from it? Asked Yujiro, making Naruto and Kashina both shudder. Yeah. Let's not talk about that. I was still young and obsessed with orange. Now, I accept my addiction to Raymond. At this, Naruto's mouth began salivating and his eyes went wide and his pupils became Raymond bowl sized Snapping her fingers in front of his eyes to get him to focus, to no avail, Kashina shook her head. Okay, so this is the agenda you two. I'm going to take Yujiro to the tower, and then I will take you to the first day of school. Ironically, it is my first day back as a ninja. So we all will have a first day it seems. Naruto nodded his head in agreement. Sounds like a plan. Yujiro simply nodded her head in agreement. Then watched in fascination as the Uzumaki duo jumped out of their seat and pumped their left fist out. Grabbed the wrist with the right. Alright. Let's go. Dad Bane. Yes. Finally. My first day of real school. I'm going to fit in perfectly Dad Bayo. Yujiro sweat dropped. They are definitely mother and son. Kane Academy one hour later. Naruto and Kashina arrived at the gates looking at the movement of activity surrounding the first day of school. Alright Gaki. Be good. I have a meeting to get to. I'll see you later. Said Kashina before kissing him on the cheek and disappearing in a swirl of water, smile on her face. Oh come on! Naruto screamed while everyone looked at him and sweat dropped. Seeing that he was causing a scene, the blonde made his way inside, pulling out his paper with a schedule for his first classroom he entered and found a seat, sitting next to his friend Sasuke who bumped fist as he sat down. Yo, Naruto said. Yo, Sasuke replied. The two remained silent, taking in the incoming students and various clans that came in, seeing old and new faces. But when that midnight hair came in, many people stopped talking. Hinata Hyuga entered the room, feeling eyes and attention built in the air. No doubt, many kids heard of her unfortunate situation, making her stoic face even more emotionless and her hands ball up into fist at the notion. She didn't want pity. She just wanted to be treated like a Kanoichi in training. Hinata-chan, a voice yelled out, dispelling all of her thoughts and the whispered. Looking up quickly, she found the waving hand of a boisterous Naruto and an embarrassed Uchiha, drawing attention away from her and onto him and his loud persona. Schooling her features but hearing her heart pump faster, she made her way to the available seat to the right of him before taking her place there and allowing a small smile to appear for once. Naruto-kun, she said simply. She realized that while being in his presence the whispers no longer affected her. The second period teacher, Mato Guy, entered to begin with Teijutsu training. It seemed that the entire school was redone, as the closet door actually led to an underground training field with a waterfall, a dojo floor and mats for the students to sit on. However, the group of freshmen were not the only ones there as the upperclassmen were also seated and ready to go. YOSH My youthful students Today we will be watching the matches of the upperclassmen, as well as having a sparring tournament of our own. To make things fair, two winners of this class, a boy and girl representatives, will spar with the winner of the upperclassmen. If we win, we will train harder, and if you lose, we will train until you can meet the upperclassmen by the end of the year. And if you can't do it at the end of the year, I will climb the Huckage Monument on my hands, and if I cannot do that, I will. I think, they get the picture Guy San, said Shizun, who is the medic on scene for the spars. So, let us set up a bracket, and get this thing going. So for now, you guys sit back, relax and enjoy the show. One hour later, Naruto cringed as another upperclassman got San crashing into the ground from the palm strike sent by the newest main branch clan prodigy. Neji, the boy was just as cocky as he heard from Jiraiya, as he had not moved from the position he started in. That was four fighters ago. Needless to say, the boy most likely would win the entire thing. Alright, 
Let's get some more youthful first year spars going on. Last one, Uchiha Sasuke vs Uzumaki Naruto. Sasuke sighed and smirked. Finally a challenge to get his blood flowing. Kiba was decent, but he had a harder time fighting a training dummy strapped with electric explosives that would shock you paralyzed if you did not hit the vital parts, thanks to Uchi. He was in a coma for a week after that. But he learned his lesson. After doing a seal of solidarity, a special one between Senju and Uchiha, a handshake and a fist bump before a high five, Sasu got into a basic stance, his left hand stretched out and palms facing down, with his right hand in front of him with his fist out, Sasuke was ready for anything. Naruto simply resorted to his hands covering both sides of his face knuckles up and under his nose like a peekaboo. Naruto sent a roundhouse kick with his right leg, catching Sasuke in the ribs on his left, making him bend forward in pain, only to catch a knee to the face and an elbow to the nose before getting choked and picked up, slammed into the ground and kicked in the ribs three times, before Sasuke grabbed the leg the fourth time, twisted it swiftly, bringing Naruto onto the floor in pain. Sasuke flailed his fist into Naruto's face five times with harsh swiftness and then choked him with both hands, even as Naruto began pushing his face with his palms to get Sasuke off of him. The both of them were holding back and settling for western-style fighting, otherwise known as wrestling. Guy knew this to be fact, they could tell by the hesitance to move naturally to the other's aggression. It was seen in the tightening of the muscles with each movement. They were definitely straining not to let go of their true styles, but the control was astounding, especially at such a young age. Naruto finally got out of it by quickly pushing Sasuke's arms back, bending his arms, allowing him time to slap both palms out and headbutt him in the face. As Sasuke backed off from seeing stars, Naruto grabbed Sasuke's right arm and catapulted the Uchiha onto his back before straddling over him and unleashing a barrage of hits while Sasuke put his arms over his head to protect himself from the weight of the hits and numerous swings, avoiding losing consciousness. Sasuke suddenly snapped up and delivered a powerful straight fist into Naruto's face, making him fly into the air and crash to the other side of the dojo. By now everyone stopped talking and sparring to watch the epic fight. Naruto and Sasuke staggered to their feet before grinning viciously. Done warming up Naruto, said Sasuke, as he got into a different stance, shifting his left leg forward and bending his knees. He then put his hands up, fist tight and adjacent to each other, closed in, his elbows touching his sides, bouncing lightly on his feet. Sasuke jabbed and hooked with his fist to show his Muay Thai style. Naruto simply smirked and got back in the same peak a boo stance. Yep, Hukage Tower, Kashina and Inochi who were about to head out on a mission, stared at the ball the Hukage had in his hand as he got up and placed it into the window, which melted and spread out, showing a full-screen view of the Academy fights, which showed the Naruto and Sasuke spar. You might want to watch this, as it will give you all an idea of who you would want to work on in a few years, said the Hukage. Somehow, news must have spread, as the Hukage turned back to see Kakashi, Asuma, Anko, Kurenai, the Sanin and the many Junin in the room set to watch the battle. Chuckling, he turned to watch the fight. Jiraiya stared ahead while placing a 50 yen in Orokimaru's hand. 50 on Naruto. Orokimaru smirked as more yen was also placed on his hand. Shushi nodded his head. 100 on Sasuke. 200 was followed as Tsunade smirked. Draw. Academy Dojo. Foot to foot, Naruto and Sasuke began swinging, jabbing, uppercutting, hooking, crossing and straight punching with their fist, simply moving their hips to dodge or enhance the power behind the hits, the two bare knuckled up for 5 minutes, even at one point taking blows back to back before staggering a bit, disheveled and bleeding all over before the two made a circle with their foot, surrounding each other and began fighting within the confines of that circle. Naruto dodged a straight before countering with a huge uppercut with his right fist, dodged by Sasuke who felt the wind blow his hair back, the opportunity showed itself as Sasuke caught Naruto in the ribs, and capitalized with a jab to the face twice then a follow-up haymaker to the jaw, making Naruto spin. But not before leaving Sasuke flying with a powerful left cross to the jaw as well, making them fly out of the circle and crash to the ground at the same time. Draw, yelled Guy as he put both hands in the air. Naruto popped his jaw back in place before shaking the cobwebs out of his head and getting up, stretching and retrieving his shirt. His scars and bruises were clearing up as he made his way to the wall to sit down, 
Sasuke next to him doing the same after Shizune healed him up a bit. You know you could have countered that punch right? Naruto whispered as he made his way back over to his friend. Yeah, but my mother told me not to give too much ability out at the moment. Just enough. Sasuke whispered back. HMM my mom said the same thing. I don't think we listened, said Naruto. You have a point. Such is life, Sasuke replied as the two sat down inside. After a while, a huge shadow came over the two. Looking up, Sasuke paled as all of the girls from the class were over them, looking at him and Naruto with hearts in their eyes. So strong. One girl murmured. Naruto however, was distracted by the sight of someone very familiar to him running away from a group of laughing peers and hiding. Well, Sasuke, I wish you luck in your future endeavors. Usually I would take the heat for this one, but I have another agenda to take care of. Godspeed my brother, said had somehow replaced himself with another girl who was looking at him and drooling. Sasuke's sweat dropped. HM. Hi? The girls squealed and jumped at him attempting to hug him to death. Naruto merely whistled as Sasuke shouted harmful threats to him while the teacher tried to pry the girls off of the Uchiha clan member. Stopping in front of a girl who was crying to herself by a tree, Naruto bent down and simply stared at her. Go away, the girl said. Naruto shook his head, though the girl probably couldn't see it with her arms covering her face. Now is that any way to greet an old friend? Naruto asked. The girl looked up at him and glared at him with her brown eyes before looking at him shocked. And Naruto? said boy smile before grabbing her hand let's get out of here outside playground naruto pushed the girl on a swing set back and forth smiling at the giggling girl how have you been he said as he pushed her higher and higher at a steady rate knowing this would cheer her up i lost my fight horribly i couldn't choose any of the weapons i had they said it was just teijutsu and i have not been as good as i should be when it comes to teijutsu said the girl, who wore green pants with blue ninja shoes and a pink Chinese design GI. Her hair was wrapped in two buns, making her look like a panda bear. Well Tenten, you've been using those weapons since the day I met you. I would expect you to be able to use your hands, which are considered weapons, just as you could with your kunai. What really happened? Asked newly named Tenten was silent for a while, the only sounds being the creaking of the swings before she sighed. I was fighting Neji. Naruto nodded in understanding. The boy was good, he would give him that, except he had a few flaws that could be exploited. It was not the loss that hurt. It was what he said after that made me so mad, said Tenten as she gripped the chains harder, until her hands turned red to which Naruto saw and wondered what he said, which was, a weakling could never hope to beat the powerful, and an orphan could never beat a clan member. Tenten jerked as Naruto grabbed the swing itself and kissed his teeth. You tell the jerk this. Our fourth Hukage, Minato Namakaze, was the greatest warrior that ever lived. He was an orphan. Jiraiya, as far as I know, the Toad Sanon does not have a last name, nor any family. Same applies to Orokimaru. Anko might Tarashi. Apprentice to Orokimaru Orphan So don't let him get to you Naruto said calmly Tenten stared wide-eyed at Naruto Her best friend He was totally right The greatest shinobi in Kanoichi had little to no family sometimes Hearing that really lifted her spirits She smiled and nodded before back flipping off the swing Naruto resumed pushing Landing on her toes Tenten looked directly into his eyes and Naruto was happy to see the fire ignite once again I understand Thank you Naruto-kun to which said blonde sight in embarrassment and never use that nickname in public, said Naruto with a smile. And what if I do little whittle Narukun? Teased Tenten. A gleam appeared in Naruto's eyes. Uzumaki's had a knack for being highly mischievous and it didn't help that Naruto was third of his clan to be the carrier of the Kiwabi. As such, games and teasing was an art he was adept at getting the last laugh with. Panda-chan, he said in a sing-song voice. Tenten paled, remembering the six-year-old meeting and the embarrassment that came from Naruto calling her that in front of her idol of all things. From then on, Tsunade nicknamed Tenten that same name, to her eternal shame and Naruto's eternal enjoyment. I'll be good, I'll be good. I am sorry, Tenten said quickly, hiding her eyes in embarrassment. Naruto smirked brightly. Glad we can have this talk. Now let's get back to class, before the teachers think we left and Naruto wiggled his eyebrows suggestively. Tenten hit his arm playfully with a blush on her face. You pervert. After school, whistling a tune while heading to the gates, Naruto stopped walking suddenly as he laid his eyes on a grinning Kashino with her arms crossed standing next to a Yujito with a remorseful look on her face as she looked at him. Revenge is sweat dobe, whispered Sasuke as he walked past him. Itachi smirking in amusement at the friendly rivalry. Naruto wanted to tell him something rather vulgar, 
but a look from his smiling mother made him think otherwise. Gulping inwardly and stealing himself for what was to come, Naruto made his way up to the two women in his life. H hey everybody, my beautiful mother and Yujiro Oni-san, said Naruto shakily with a weak smile. Hi whispered Yujito. She was highly impressed with the exhibition bout she witnessed in the Hukage's office. While she was waiting for a mission, she also met Sasuke's older brother Itachi and his best friend Shisui, who was kind of cute in her book. Not that she would mention that to anyone. Kashina merely stared at her son as her grin turned almost shark-like. If anyone had seen the smirk they would think she was proud and happy at the achievement her son had made on his first day back from school. Naruto felt the grip of the Shinigami gripping his soul slowly coming to devour him as he took every step closer to his mother. Well, Sonny, we will have to be having a nice little training session on self-control once we get home. But that can wait, let us show Yuki-chan here this great big village shall we, said Kashina as she turned around and walked off, planning the many methods to teach Naruto self-control. Naruto's sweat dropped massively before closing his eyes and accepting his fate. Walking next to his newly adopted older sister, he whispered lowly, If I die Yujito, don't forget about me in the afterlife, said the boy, a dark cloud over his head, raindrops messing his hair up. Sewer, Yujito said slowly before walking faster to catch up with Kashina, leaving the poor Uzumaki to wallow in pity. Next week Saturday Senju Uzumaki clan house backyard. Naruto lay dirtied and exhausted on the field as Kashina and Yujito sat in a hot tub watching the spar with Tsunade. If you could call it that as Tsunade who was relatively fresh as a daisy washed Naruto all over the field as he could not get within an inch of the same area as her before getting pelted with stones, dirt balls or her finger. Now, besides hundreds of weights holding you down and not using your brain, why do you think you have not touched me yet? Sunade said from her position on the field. Naruto tried to think of reasons why. She was extremely experienced in field layout, so she would know in what ways he could get to her. Despite her age, she was rather fast with her movement, even if it did not explain the reason why as she was in the same spot when they Egan. Genjutsu? Asked Naruto suddenly, surprise in his tone. Tsunade nodded in approval. A rather subtle genjutsu that affects your perception the moment you come within inches of me. You were so focused on trying to hit me, that when you came close, you never noticed the distorted vision you were getting until it was too late. Genjutsu is the greatest downfall any shinobi or kunoichi can get caught in. As such, today's training will be on chakra control. Again, this time, you will be solely focused on acknowledging genjutsu dispelling it, and then you will learn to create genjutsu, as every shinobi should have some in their repertoire. Tsunade finished her lecture mode and looked at Naruto to see if he understood. Naruto nodded. He had focused on genjutsu and Suna as this was one of his worst skills as a shinobi in training. So it in turn would be the one he would focus on the most. So, you are going to use your chakra to walk on mud with 50 pounds of rock on your back. This will strengthen you while teaching you control said Tsunade as she channeled Chakra to her hands. As Naruto was about to ask about the non-existent pit, Tsunade smashed her fist into the ground once more, lifting up the ground. Continuing until she was not seen, dirt and grass was upturned as her shovel hands kept digging. Finally reaching the bottom she jumped out. Water release, hydro cannon, filling the hole to a decent size. She discontinued the jutsu and began another. Earth release. Swamp of the Underworld. The pit instantly began to get filled with mud as Kashino's and Tsunade's technique filled the hole up. Lifting a stone and grabbing a rope from Naruto had no idea where. Tsunade made her way over to the sweating Naruto. You'll be fine. This is nothing compared to the training we got when we were your age, Tsunade said. Naruto stared blankly at Tsunade. Have you been trying to focus on chakra control while on a tightrope above a pit of snakes with random kunai being tossed at you? 200 pounds of weights on your body and 10 seconds on a clock to get to the other side and if you failed 50 pounds would be added and you had to do it again? Naruto stated in a monotone voice. Tsunade nervously chuckled. Kashina is crazy, Tsunade decided in her mind. Maybe not. Second week Monday Academy. Naruto had finally concocted a plan to build bonds and strengthen each of his classmates by the end of the semester. Whether or not they would graduate. His mother had taught him that bonds were important as Kanaha Shinobi. Making his way up to Sasuke, Naruto sat down and put his feet up. Fight me. Sasuke looked at him with an expression that said I thought you would never ask. HN. Which translated to, when? After school at your clan house. Sasuke smirked. HN. Sasuke replied. Another translation for Teijutsu. Genjutsu and Ninjutsu? Naruto nodded. Yeah. 
I need to get my genjutsu skills up anyway, said Naruto. Sasuke said nothing. HN, he replied. Which meant deal. Naruto nodded and got up, just as a fangirl sat down and Sasuke changed into the unemotional robot he had resolved to become in the academy to ward off any more advances. Besides, somebody had to be the MO of the class, and Shikamaru was too lazy to do it. Naruto simply passed by Hinata and sat next to Ino. Hinata said nothing merely staring at the front of the class before wondering when he put a flower in her hair without her seeing it. Her Byakugan was on the minute he entered the room. Naruto sat next to the Yamanaka clan head, who was staring at Sasuke in bliss. Clearing his throat to begin his theatrics, Naruto got her attention with physical touch, resulting in confused eyes shifting from angry, to surprise and finally intrigued as Naruto grabbing her hands. Ino, let me keep things real and serious. I know you have some infatuation with my friend. But my friend desires a strong female in his life. Someone that could destroy him in a fight. You, are the perfect candidate by far for this task. As such, I am willing to strike a deal with you, said Naruto. Ino was all ears from there. Let's train once a week. And that was how Naruto's after schools were for the next four years. Monday Hyuga compound. Hinata walked down the hallway. Yakugan on full blast. She could now see everyone in a 35 meter radius thanks to avoiding Naruto and his flowers. She could be considered paranoid, but she could not comprehend how he was able to get the drop on. Turning around, Hinata blasted her Juken palm into the intruder, only to reel back in mild surprise at the training dummy with a sign on its front. Good job detecting me but bad job not getting the rose out of your hair. Sincerely, the training dummy, Hinata sighed. Taking the rose out, Hinata made her way home to get it pressed. This was getting to be annoying. She owned over tons of flowers because of Naruto, and as stoic as she was, she definitely used them for medicine or flower pressing. Though she would brutally abuse the person who found out she did such things. She still had an image to uphold. Naruto sat in a tree observing her and sighed in confusion. In three months, Hinata went from a sai meek and sweet girl to an almost emotionless and obviously traumatized personality. She had seemed to develop a princess complex that made being friends with her both amusing and difficult, but most of all he just wished to have his friend back. It didn't help that his mother knew what was the issue, but was unwilling to tell him, asking him to ask the source instead as she was aware of what the problem was. It seemed like training was the only way to get her to open up as such. He spent time widening her range while invading her blind spot. This was a ploy to get her to open up her other senses in case she relied too much on her eyes. Tuesday, Shino and Naruto sat in the park staring at the ants crossing their path. See, these ants might be strong, but they sure do pack a punch. One bite can leave a man itching for days. I think creating an alliance with fire ants might do some good Shino-san. Picking one up. Shino observed and communicated with them before nodding at Naruto. I asked it to bite me to show me its usage. I am in pain already. My finger is itching massively and I feel a sudden urge to scream in utter frustration at the pain emanating from my finger, said Shino plainly. Naruto nodded. I concur. My finger too is on fire. You did not have to suggest them to bite me as well, Naruto replied. The two said nothing before slowly standing up. I'm going to go home and tell my father while trying not to produce tears from my ocular ducts, said Shino before using a bug shunshin to head home. Naruto nodded and enjoyed the peacefulness nature brought before howling in pain and scratching his finger. Ouch, 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 ouch. Wednesday. Your idea of shoji is rather troublesome. But I can see the benefits as much as I want to lay down. I knew you would eat things my way, Naruto replied. Did I mention that the two dodging the random items being thrown periodically by Yoshino Nara? The two were dodging pots, pans, kettles, forks, knives, kanai, deer making the two wonder how strong was this woman? And more while in the midst of playing Shoji, Shikamaru was intrigued at first then mad at the fact that he would have to concentrate on the fly while playing shoji and moving, something he just did not want to do. But then he noticed his mother would be exhausted after a couple of hours of doing this, leaving the house quiet as a storm when morning came. He knew he was a lazy genius, but Naruto was a breed of his own. If he did this twice a week, it would allow him and his father to relax on those off days. You lose, said Naruto. Shikamaru examined the board while deflecting Kunai with a shoji piece and smirked. Took you 197 times to do so. Naruto nodded in agreement. Best out of 300, I figured the first 100 times I beat you was a fluke, 
said Naruto. Shikamaru shook his head while dodging a pot. Your movements were erratic and I could not think as fast as I can now on account of the pots being thrown my way. But now I am getting the hang of thinking while dodging, replied Shikamaru. Naruto nodded. I want a rematch. You're on said Shikamaru. The throwing of items their way suddenly ceased and the two turned, only to sweat drop when Yoshino created a clone who went into the field behind them while she sat down and waited. What? Somebody has to pick up the pots when I am done with them, said Yoshino simply. Thursday. Again, said Naruto. He was in the gym lifting weights with Chaoji, nothing too crazy, as that might stunt his growth. But the two came here every other day to get muscled up, Naruto telling him it was the best way to get fit and it would raise his metabolism up as well, giving him justification to eat even more. As long as it was a good balance of healthy food as such, Chaoji could be seen destroying tons of fruits and vegetables, and on Fridays and Saturdays chips, Sundays were binge days. This coupled with exercising on Tuesday and Thursday, weightlifting Monday and Wednesday, made Chaoji a rather good-looking young man at his age. One more rep, push, push, good, yelled Naruto as Chaoji finished his set, slamming the 200 pounds he was squatting with to the floor. That is good enough. Let's hit the shower and go eat some steak or something, said Naruto, laughing as Chaoji shook his head. That would just defeat the purpose. You know that, we got to eat healthy today to retain the muscle said Chaoji blankly. Naruto smiled and pushed his friend. Spoil sport. Friday. Kiba sniffed the air, his eyes covered in war paint with Akamaru right next to him, the size of a German shepherd as it grew up rather fast thanks to the new food Naruto had gotten from Iwa. Okay, Akamaru, I can smell him with my sister. I am going for the takeout. Keep watch and alert me of anything alright, said Kiba. Akamaru nodded knowing not to bark as he would alert the two of what was going on. Silently moving through the forest, Kiba prepared to jump and attack the perpetrator, only to freeze once he caught what just happened. Akamaru N.O. Naruto and Hana stopped their sparring to watch Kiba run out and scream at Akamaru, who is currently doing some things hormonal dogs do when they are in the presence of female dogs. While building a camaraderie with Kiba, he had came across a sister who was also a rather beautiful Kanoichi, but someone he looked up to. He found himself drawn to her caring personality and wondered why she was single, plotting and scheming a possible date with Adachi. Kiba, young and not too trusting of his friend, would take this time to follow them any and everywhere. Unknowingly, Naruto would always mask his scent, and sometimes Hana's, to deter him. Well now we know why the other two are pregnant, said Hana as she had left her dogs at home and brought a pack of female dogs to get some training done with the monstrous animals in the field. Naruto nodded. True, your brother is getting better, scoping us from your clan house to the outside of the forest of death. Impressive. Hana nodded, looking at Naruto in mild surprise at the information, almost as if he was. Hana laughed as she figured out what he was doing. Good move Naruto, good move. Naruto however, remained staring at the scene in front of them, tilted his head to the side in mild amusement, watching Kiba try and fail to get his dog away from the pack. I think you should say that to Akamaru. Kiba screamed again. Saturday, Sakura swung with a harsh haymaker, making Naruto dodge before he poked her forehead again, taking a uppercut to his chin, sending him back flipping in the air before landing on the ground. Your speed is increasing, but you have not stopped me from attacking you said Naruto as he picked himself up off the ground. When Naruto proposed the plan to teach Sakura Teijutsu and other skills, Sakura was a bit apprehensive to accept. After all, this was the same person who was always around her best friend and her future husband, so it was normal to hate him. So when he offered to help her, in her confusion, she simply nodded her head. But this tactic seemed like he was just strengthening her for an inevitable girl fight with Ino. When she brought it up, Ino laughed and asked if she really wanted to not get better if she herself trained with Naruto two times a week. She shut up and took the training soon enough. Now remember, you cannot let your temper get in the way of your fist. You have the making to be either a great genjutsu mistress or a powerful medic nin, close to Tsunade herself. But don't tell her I said that. She'd just steal you from me. I want you to impress her beyond words when I am done with you. So we will move on to the next step. Naruto handed her a scroll filled with chakra theory and more. I won this off a bet with Tsunade. These are special medical techniques used to both heal and inflict pain. Learn one by the end of the week and we will work on the next one. Now let us begin again, 
We got about 10 minutes before your mom will come looking for you, said Naruto simply, knowing her to always take Sakura away for their family dinners. While initially her mother wasn't the most supportive, she couldn't deny the results and Sakura developed into a strong and faster Kanoichi in training. Sunday, Naruto ran from the fire jutsu and earth clones chasing after him via Sasuke with an amused Itachi and Shusui who was half watching as he was too busy sparring with Yujito. I knew I should not have taught him mud clones. These methods of training helped Naruto and his friends not only become closer, but a lot stronger than any other training possibly could. This had a domino effect as it began to bleed into the families, making more of a bound as well. Yoshino nodded as she looked out the window and found an early rising Shikamaru heading off to school. You were right. The training did do wonders, she said to an exhausted Shikaku who also had to partake in the training sometimes as he would often neglect chores and various things in the house. Troublesome. The kid is making me look bad. He mumbled to himself. Shibi nodded at the new addition of insect into his clan forest. A formidable addition these moths, powerful and impressive in their execution, usage is highly successful taking a bit of clothing and tracking that person down with it. Naruto was truly a big help to the clan. Shino nodded. I concur. Chaoza chuckled as his son picked him up and began bench pressing him. That's my boy. Strong and powerful. Naruto has been a good help to your skill. Treat him to some food from your mother someday. Yes to San. 15. 16. Hinata closed her eyes and listened. She heard trees ruffling. Water from the lake around her. The wind blowing through the shirts hung up to dry. She heard the walking of her fellow clan members, heard chatter about frivolous optics, and finally she heard what she had been looking for. Opening her eyes, she immediately tossed a senban through the air and seconds later it hit the target, an apple, through the dark board that was set up outside the clan house, down the pathway of her compound, located half a mile away and on top of the clan house of the Uzumaki clan house where a training dummy was currently sitting blindfolded in front of the board. Hayashi actually widened his eyes and Neji smirked in happiness at the achievement. Impressive, it seems this Naruto character has been a thorn in your side for a reason. Hinata simply nodded, looking directly into Naruto's eyes and giving a small smile before schooling her features and heartbeat. Years later Academy Day of Graduation, the day had come. The day to graduate had finally arrived. The test would not be as wild, or hard. As far as the other clan members and some civilians were concerned, all thanks to the contribution Naruto had made. So far, they had taken tests that were more of a mental roller coaster than physical. From the moment they entered, their examiner was none other than Moreno Ibiki, who unnerved most of them out like none other. They were told that if they cheated on his test, a test that were asking questions only a cage would know, points would be taken off as a result. However, if they got caught, they would get kicked out. Instantly that sounded off, as many realized they wouldn't actually fail if they cheated. So many people did cheat in their own little sneaky ways. Come to find out, one of the genin who had been in their classroom for over four years, were not genin at all. A kid named Sai was already a junin and could have been used to cheat off of. The second test was a tracking exam in which they all had to retrieve a scroll in the middle of the forest of death in six hours. Once that was done, a huge tournament was done to figure out who would be the best Teijutsu, Genjutsu and Ninjutsu user of the year. Except they had to fight chunins and junins. As such, Guy, Shizun, who was on hand as a nurse, Asuma, Kakashi, Kurinai and Itachi Uchiha respectively were on hand for the specific fields of that they specialized in. At the end of the day you had to face all but they got the opportunity to choose what field first. Though, that was not the only reason they were on hand. Chaoji, Hinata, and Kiba aimed for Teijutsu first, Sakura, Ino and surprisingly Shino and Shikamaru went for Genjutsu with Naruto and Sasuke headed for Ninjutsu. After a long period of testing, resulting in all genin hopefuls getting beat relentlessly by Kurunai and Itachi in Genjutsu, Kakashi in Ninjutsu and Gai and Asuma in Teijutsu, the rankings were achieved. Top Teijutsu 1. Sasuke Uchiha 2. Hinata Hyuga 3. Naruto Uzumaki 4. Kiba Inuzuka 5. Chaoji Akimaki Top Ninjutsu 1. Naruto Uzumaki 2. Sasuke Uchiha 3. Kiba Inuzuka 4. Hinata Hyuga 5. Shikamaru Nara Top Genjutsu 1. Sakura Haruno 2. Sasuke Uchiha 3. Shinobaram 4. Shikamaru Nara 5. 
Ino Yamanaka. Naruto stared at the list with a blank face for a long time. A very long time before turning towards Hinata, who was speaking to Neji, and walking directly up to her. You held back. It was a statement. Hinata nodded. Just as you have. Did you think you were the only one who was formidable in Teijutsu and Ninjutsu? Or have you not noticed that I have never lost a bout in Teijutsu to any boy in the class, or girl for that matter? Interrupting the conversation, Neji made his way over. Too caught up in his thoughts, as he had already graduated and was there to pick up his cousin, he missed the twitch in Naruto's right hand that gradually got deeper and more frantic with each step he took. By the time he came within range, Hinata politely backed up. Neji, thinking it was to join the conversation, spoke. It is more over the fact that the Hyuga is simply. Neji got cut off by the fist that appeared in his gut. He was then roughly grabbed by his collar and smashed into the wall by an irate Naruto. I heard you are on a team with Tenten and you have been degrading and putting her and Lee down with your words, said Naruto simply. It was finally time to put Neji on the ground in a humbling fashion. Forget holding back. What's it to you? It is fate that they would be beneath me, not let go of me. I will not ask again, Neji said. Hyakugan activated and a snarl in place. Naruto let him go but did not leave his space. See me on the training grounds. Let me show you what I think about your fate, Naruto said simply. When asked Neji, coughing blood up. His hit was absolutely powerful. Where this nobody got the gall to hit him. He had no idea. Naruto turned around and began walking towards the school grounds. Now, Naruto heel dropped, missing Neji by inches as the main branch member picked himself up off the floor, getting into his clan stance. Naruto simply ran at him like a bull before sending a left jab, which was dodged, but still resulted in a confusing Neji as his left foot got stepped on, leaving him in place to receive a right hook to the face. Staggering back, he dodged the roundhouse kick but not the follow-up kick to the side of his head. Naruto kept the assault on Neji up, fainting and hitting him with unexpected hits, but Neji seemed to begin to understand the movements as Naruto finds it and struck out his left hand went for an attack. Neji dodged to the right as Naruto overextended, placing his shoulder directly in front of Naruto's chest before jabbing Naruto's outstretched hand with his left hand, paralyzing it for a moment and following that with a left juke and palm to the chest made Naruto spread up blood and stumble back. Your erratic style is impressive but now utterly useless now that I have figured out your entire style. Neji stated with utter confidence as he wiped the blood off of his face. Naruto said nothing. Simply began moving began stretching before dancing in a weird motion that had his legs moving back and forth and his hands switching up and down. Naruto said nothing as he began running at Neji like a monkey with his fist on the ground and jumped in the air. Neji attempting to place a palm strike at his chest but was amazed as Naruto grabbed his arm, spun in the air and flung him to the ground, landing on his feet and the balls of his feet. Naruto followed up with a right clawed strike to his chest, ripping his Hyuga garments and then Naruto backed away from Neji before cartwheeling, kicking Neji in the face with both of his shoes as he was getting up. Naruto then put his hands on the floor and front fibbed, sending his feet into the back of the slowly rising Neji's head, making him eat dirt. At this point, Many of the students exited the school, teachers and parents as well to witness this throwdown of epic proportions. Yet nobody was willing to stop it, but were ready to intervene had it been something brewing for a while. HM, it seems as if you challenged Neji to a fight, about time, said Sasuke as he crossed his arms. Wait, so Neji and Naruto never liked each other? Asked Kiba. Sasuke nodded as he watched Naruto dance out of Neji's strikes and attack. Naruto wanted to fight him since the first day of school. What better time than now, as Neji is already an established genom? Asked Sasuke. Meanwhile, Neji snarled and spun in the air, releasing a huge ball of chakra, known as the kitten, shocking some people at his was sent flying backwards landing on his hands and feet as he slid on the ground. Neji got up and began moving his hands in a slow motion, steadily speeding up. You are in my range of divination. Naruto shocked everyone as he smirked and disappeared. Imagine Neji's shock when from underground, a hand appeared and grabbed his foot, sending a shock of electricity running through him, making him collapse. Naruto fully emerged from the ground next to a still recovering Neji. Glaring at the downed Hyuga, 
Naruto spoke, I want to introduce you to utter defeat through two Taijutsu styles, a shadow clone, and two ninjutsu. This is what it feels like to be humiliated. Know that even now, I was holding back. Test me. Say something the meaning to your teammates again and I will know of it. I will find you. I will beat you. Then I will humiliate you. Just as you have humiliated your fellow classmates all those years ago, said Naruto, as he turned around and came face to face with Hinata, who smirked. Enough. She said in slow motion, the crowd gasped as Hinata systematically shut down Naruto's entire chakra system in mere seconds. Naruto crashed to the floor in shock at letting his guard down. Hinata turned around, smirk on her face, only for it to fall as she looked directly into the eyes of a smug looking Naruto as the new gen and she just attacked poofed away into smoke. Good but not good enough, Naruto said as he backed away from her slowly watching her face more for surprise, to anger and finally happiness. I will defeat you, she said, as the crowd slowly dispersed, with teachers checking on a still surprised Neji, who was taken to the nurse's office. The two stared one another down until everyone left, leaving the Hyuga and Uzumaki out on the field. What happened to you? Naruto suddenly asked. While he trained with her as well for the past four years, there was an obvious distance between the two. She only spoke of training and while he tried to get deeper with his old friend, she remained stoic and never answered anything pertaining to her three months or her seal. Hinata shook her head slowly. I changed Naruto. A lot can happen in three months and she stopped speaking as memories racked her brain from the past. Images of water and blood on a wall. Screams. A red Sharingan eye looking at her with a smirk on their face. Long black hair. Hinata. A voice shouted out bringing her back to reality. Naruto shook her back as he watched her. A minute ago her eyes glaze over and her chakra began to fluctuate dangerously. There were so many questions swirling in his head as his friend continued to act even more mysterious. Suddenly a blast of chakra sent Naruto crashing to the floor as Hinata screamed into the air. A cape bigger than he thought possible rushed through the area, alerting those in the vicinity. Hinata cancelled her jutsu as she struggled to breathe. Stay away from me. And as she disappeared into thin air, Naruto would always remember the tears streaming down her face and the pleading tone in her whisper for years to come. Please. That's the end guys make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment. This is Maelstrom signing off.